All right, everybody, welcome back to the Infinite Weekend Podcast, episode 66. I'm Zach, that's Josh. Thanks for listening. Once again, thanks. Yep. So, 60 episodes. Yeah, 60. It don't, it don't feel like that many. No. I mean, it's been a year and a half because we skipped so, so we much. We did. It's okay. Normally. Actually, somebody told me they they kind of fell off after our, the, the hiatus. Or we were like two weeks off, really? No, it was, no, it was like six weeks. Remember, we had like that long hiatus. It was when I first. I that. It was back in like March ish when oh, I okay. first took that the new job. Oh, uh, that's yeah. right. Are they, are they back on we now? We called it the hiatus. Um, yeah, yeah, they're back. Oh, on. okay, then we're fine. They picked back up. Okay. They fell off a little bit, so they did playing a little catch up. It, actually, better for them. They can binge. Mm. So yes. good for them. Yep. Although the episode that they came back on, they were like, "It's really boring." <laughs> Which one was it? <laughs> Uh, it was the one, um, you know, the one. Oh yeah. That one was okay. Yeah. Got it. I yep. don't want to, mm-hmm. that's all right. I mean, I don't say it was that. a little paced differently. We'll it's, just say yeah, that. Right. It paced it was differently that than our usual, yeah. our usual banter and such. Yep. That's fine. So, uh, I forgot we did that. Yeah. Okay. It was a while. I mean, it was over a month. I want to say. I didn't know. I guess that's true. Well, shit happened, you yeah. know? Right, so we weren't we're fully, being paid we weren't to do right this. on like every week to where we when we because like when we hit fifty two, right, which would be would be once a week, mm-hmm. we were we we should have hit that in like May. Yeah, yeah, this past year that's okay. We blew past it. I've I've been doing I follow um Buzz Buzz Sprouts Facebook page, mm-hmm. and you can there's other Potters on there, and you can get on there and Potters Potters so Potters there. That is that what it is? we yeah, are Potters Potters Potter Potter Potter. Anyway, so I got on there and talked to, was looking at them. You can post your links. You're not supposed to try, but sometimes the page admin will let you post your recent episode. And then I've been, I just get on there and read other people's podcasts you're doing. A lot of the big heavy hitters are like mental health and like crime and like self help stuff seems to be the ones that like just. Pew. But I was like, I don't, I don't really want to do that. Um, not certified. I'm not certified. <laughs> yeah, I'm not at all. If anything, I'd probably bring more problems onto your life. <laughs> We could. What if we? What if we actually started one <laughs> of those? Self, a so like that was like a self help podcast. Just be a total. Dick. But it was like the worst advice imaginable. <laughs> They'll call on like I'm really thinking about. it. I'm like you probably should. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, oh to- my, uh, my girlfriend just dumped me, and I'm really depressed. And I'm like, I don't know. Why don't you get the sand out of your vagina and get back yeah. out there? You know. Actually, better advice would be sleep with her friend. Right. There you go. Well, actually, get, matter of fact, get revenge. Advice. Sleep with her friends. Yes. See ya. Thanks for calling. Yeah. And then you just hang it with the next one. We might look into that. <laughs> we should, <laughs> should do that. <laughs> uh, I haven't yeah. heard one of those. Because I'm really good at giving advice but not taking it. Like, I'm really good at, like, analyzing a situation, yeah. sh- a situation and giving options and my opinion on things. But I'm absolutely terrible at following my own advice. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So... That's what the podcast could be all about, just giving advice but doing none of it. Yeah, like we're giving incredible advice to help people, and we are pieces of shit. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> advice from an asshole. Advice from an asshole. Hashtag. <laughs> Speaking of asshole, I installed a ceiling fan for the first time yesterday. Let me guess. It did not go well. Um, you raged like I raged times. Twice. Okay. Um, that's good for you. That's progress. That's not bad. That's, I thought it wasn't terrible. I was still a dick. Like regardless, it right. it, it went off the rails. <laughs> did and you there, break anything? I did not break okay, anything. Right. We end up, you know, we've been you've been to our house like a, yeah. redoing rooms. You buy a house if you buy a house in the '60s, you will have to do some things. The wiring is old and thick and shitty. Whatever it works, old and thick, old and thick, thick wiring, thick wiring. So. You know what I'm doing? It's like the thicker, like eight ten gauge wire. Oh, yeah, 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 I got you. I'll, we'll just say old and thick. <laughs> yeah, thick house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had started doing the rooms. Well, it's been like a year now. We like the room was like at seventy percent, and we were like, you know what? Let's just pull all this shit out of here, and let's just start. For, let's finish everything. Let's patch holes like we're nail holes. Let's caulk everything. Let's do. Let's get after it. So she, was, I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, I was like, I got to go to Lowe's, and she's like, well, get that ceiling fan I want. I'm like, all right, let me see if they have it. It's really fancy. So I get it to the house, take the old one down, which, mind you, I am not an electrician. I am not a home. This is my first home. I am not good at that shit. <clears throat> so I pull the old one out. It's two wires. Like, yeah, hot, whatever. Cool. Take it out. I'm like, all right. Get the new one out. 
The new one has a, a remote module and only works on a remote. I looked at her and I was like, you would pick out the one that has a fucking remote control and only works on the remote control. So you have to install all this shit and then rewire this module box to talk to the remote. And it gets dark at four now. Mm -hmm. The room is dark. I can't find my headlight. So we have like flashlights everywhere. And you have to do this up on the stepladder. And it's once it's done, it looks awesome. But I was in, furious with the entire operation. Wait, so <clears> now <throat> you have to control that one ceiling fan. I have a remote control for you it. You have the remote control. It's badass. The light and the it's, yeah, fan. Yeah, it's badass. I mean, it's got three speeds. It's got all... It's so it doesn't work for the light shit. switch. You can turn power to it. Okay. Like, just the light. But everything okay. else is operated with a remote. Okay. Now, once the modules and everything, the remote, we just put it on the wall so you can take it on and off. And, like, uh, okay. you can lay in bed and turn your fan on. It's awesome. Okay. Once it's in, it's great. But after doing it and then freaking out a couple of times, because I really looked at it and I was like, she was like, we should just probably stop. And I was like, I will be in here. I don't care if I'm here till five in the morning. I will be in this room until the ceiling's fan done. I don't care if you had to come here and feed me. I'm not leaving this fucking room until it's done. Should have just got a smart fan at that point. Well, it's kind of what it is. To your phone. Oh, well, I mean, I'd or Alexa or whatever. Yeah. Alexa, install this fan. Alexa, I'm sweaty. And I'm sweaty. Kicks mm -hmm. on. Right. <laughs> but no, it's really nice. I just... I, I told her, I said, I am a person who I cannot do home projects and not freak out. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. I don't like doing any of it. It brings me zero joy. Then we should film it and put it online. I know. Everyone thinks that. <laughs> I was just told the other day that I should stream <laughs> video games. Yes. And, uh, yeah. But just play really hard yeah. games that other people are think they're hard. And they're like, you should play this. You'd freak out. Yeah. I'm like... Or I could just enjoy it. And I don't know why you have to. Yeah. So, so I've thought about that avenue of revenue as well. Right. So, the, right. You may have a heart attack at 62, but. Right. Right. We're going to make a lot of money out of this thing. Exactly. <laughs> so my wife has the patience of a saint with me. I mean, fuck, it's been 13 years. She knows exactly how I'm going to react to things. 13 years. God damn. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Dude. We went dirt biking today. Dad and I did. Do you know what we saw today? And I've never seen in person hmm. in the wild. I've only seen on videos. I've seen people shoot them. Have you ever seen a wild boar in person? Um, no. It is They're big. way freakier in person. And it looks like a freak of nature. Mm -hmm. We were on the bottom of the hill coming down a ravine. And the trails right now are on the top side are covered in leaves. So you can't see a whole lot on the trail itself. Came to the bottom. Looking around, Dad's like, I'm going to go around here and check out around this this is big fallen tree. This is in Kentucky by the lake. I'm like, we'll check it out see if we can go around it. <clears throat> so he's going. All of a sudden, I saw, I was probably 40 yards from him. I saw like this black fur ball thing stirring up under. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, I don't know. I've never seen. I've been, we've been riding there like 15 years. I've never seen one. Yeah. <clears throat> it was probably 25, 30 feet from Dad. And here it comes out. This big freak frankenstein looking pig come i mean full fur head like i mean head tusks the and everything. yeah the shoulders on it were like a small pickup truck yeah so i look at he looks at me and he's like holy shit and i said you got to get away from it yeah. i said i have i'm dressed up like an astronaut i have zero mobility if they'll charge at you that's what i told him the only thing you could do and we have no weapons on it like this is just gear right so you could like throw your bike in front of it and that's it. I told him, I said, I, I just have to outrun you. I'm, I'm, and of course, Kyle was like, I don't carry a gun. I said, No, I don't carry a gun in my, my pack. Yeah. I, no, I've never seen one of these. So then wild boars eat that dude in Silence of the Lambs dude, or so, Hannibal. Yeah. Well, he, they starved him and trained that's him. That's what trained him and they eat that dude. Yeah. So he came out and you just look at him, but like, I was amazed how big. I mean, it's a pig, mm -hmm. it's huge. And they're back, they're just like neck and back. Like they're, and when they run, they have like a bounce to them, like yeah. you see, like in like like you see in a Disney movie, <laughs> like Pumba. It just well, he's a warthog, but you know what I mean. It bounces. Same kind of dude. Thing. That was the weirdest shit I've ever seen. It was wild. But if it would have turned around, I was I told him I said you gotta get away from it, dude. I said this isn't like seeing a deer. I don't. Mm. That's a temperamental thing, especially if he's got some little ones up under there. You don't know. I don't know. Right. So yeah, that was that was cool. That was my little wildlife expedition today. I wanted to share that with you. Well, nice. If you've never seen one in person, you need to check it out. I think I seen one like a long time ago when I was a kid. I just don't remember. I didn't even know they were out there. Like I know that they're in the wild, but mm -hmm. I have years of going there. I have never seen one. I mean, even hunting, I've never seen one. It's a big bastard. Oh yeah. He was probably probably ever bit of two hundred pounds. 
You I see would, that? I would think. <laughs> What's that video you've shown? Uh, it was a, several weeks ago, but it's this came to mind where they're they're like uh, on a Humvee or something like that, and they have got a um, like a M like a M two sixty or some shit like no, that. So that is a that's a what is that on the side a, of that truck? So they have two different ones. They have a mini gun and they have a yeah. they have a fifty cal. That's it. And they have a two forty Bravo. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't just know. Like mowing down those hogs in the middle of the night. Lone Star. Lone Star uh, boars or something. Right. Yeah, those guys are nuts. They do all night hunting off the back of either side-by-sides or a truck. Yeah. And they use mil-spec weapons to kill. But, dude, the it, the whole place is overrun. I think it's Texas they're in. Probably. I mean, it's they destroy farms. So it's what they'll awesome. do is, one guy I looked at, they'll take people out to hunt, shoot the boars, leave the bodies, and then shoot coyotes at night. Or a lot of the guys will actually kill the boars, collect them, and donate the meat. Yeah, yeah. They'll donate all that because people still eat that wild. This is wild pork. Yeah, yeah. But the big males and stuff apparently smell really bad. They stink. Probably. Um, I mean, it's a pig. I, I've never hunt them. I've always wanted to. But it only takes two weeks for a for a pig to go feral. Two weeks. Oh, really? For so a like a pig to like get a farm out. pig. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, from what I read, it's also and, humans. And if I'm wrong, right? Two weeks for a person to get out there and naked, <laughs> and you grow hair and tusk, <laughs> but. So what I I may be wrong if somebody wants to correct me, but I'm pretty sure it's two weeks. And then what happens is those farm pigs get out and mate with these other wild pigs, and then they just spread like nuts. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> humans do that too. Yeah, two weeks humans. out of your home, you turn feral. <laughs> right, turn feral. <laughs> Start mating with other feral humans, and then you have furry people running around. <laughs> right. It'd be cool if we saw that today. Some furry people. <laughs> That's actually not Sasquatch. It's just furry people. Uh, speaking of furry things roaming around, uh, I got uh, I've air tagged Steve today, so I just uh, put a little air tag on his collar. I thought you were concerned with him running around. I want to see like where he's away. where he's uh. Run- I just kind of want to see where he goes because I do let him out, and uh, it looks like he's still in the house. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't think. Wait. Gonna- uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think. I think he's, he's on the edge of the I house. I think he's just excited to like. He's in the out. bushes. Yeah, see. He's think, looking for a female kitty. I think he's in the bushes right outside the house. He's looking for a female kitty. That's pretty much it. I mean, what else would you do? There are other cats around here that he doesn't interact with. He just likes to watch them. Right. <laughs> we so, do that. Right. <laughs> There's other people I like to. So I do with women. I don't want to interact with. I just like to watch them. <laughs> I just like to watch women. I don't like to. can't interact. No. I'm going to air tag you next time. Uh, they might Vegas. attack me if I get too close. So. I gotta... well, hopefully. That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> yeah, right. He'd be a great rape victim. <laughs> Can't rape the bullet. <laughs> I'd love for you to call me. You're all disheveled. And you're like, something happened, dude. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. We ended up talking about uh, uh, rape sandals again. Uh, you talking the, the ones got one of those pictures? Yeah, dude. He's dude st- I almost commented and put, dude, what happened? You yeah. can't even get raped at a game show. Exactly. I know. You can't, if, you be, if you play the victim, you will be the victim. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, so we did we did play that uh, game show. Uh, How was that? The great big game show. It was in Nashville. Well, it's Opera big, Mills. Not a big crowd. Yeah, it was uh, eight of us, and we did. Uh, it was even guys girls. So we split up uh, with that guys being on one team, girls being on another team. That makes it was, sense. It was, when you said split. That's cool. It was all in one room, and uh, had like a little podium, and you had the buzzers, um, and there was I think there was six. You mm-hmm. can have a max of twelve, I think. So there was six buzzers so, um, uh, at this this podium, and there's like a screen, and the little presenter girl, she kind of like acted like a game show host, and you know, threw little like corny hot? jokes and stuff like that. No, and then there was a a wheel uh, that had like a you know from a hundred to two thousand points on it, and and also okay. so it, it was like a various games that you play. I think we ended up playing six games, seven games. Now is this just a variation of games? Or yeah, is just like, mini, okay. little mini games. So like, uh, it was there was a trivia section, and then there was a section where we had to you had to basically do uh, Pictionary like charades, kind of where you draw. Yeah. Uh, but you had to do it blindfolded, so you had to draw a blindfold and people had to guess. So that was a game. Then there was the one with the wheel where you had to spin it, and you're trying to get the most points. But if you land on lose it all, then you lose all your points. So it's a kind of a game of you know do you you know kind of kind of keep going to increase your points so you kind of hold what you got and you alternate on teams and uh the girls ended up beating us they had more points there was another one where we had to like stack blocks uh different shaped blocks as high as you can make a tower within the time limit and then uh there was another one that was um that was uh you took little um like nerf guns with little uh, sticky um bullets yeah. and you had to like shoot them at a screen 
that was had uh, the like floating orbs around that for your team's color. You had to shoot all you know both teams shot at the same time to try to get the most points. And so it was like various little ga- different types of games like that. But it was really fun. I mean, it got rowdy. Um, it was like I don't know, like thirty minutes, maybe an hour. I don't know. It definitely wasn't an hour. If if uh, it went by real fast, but it looked um, cool. Yeah, it was like forty bucks. It was well worth forty bucks per person. Um, it's a, it was attached to the Escape game. Yeah, uh, I remember that's out in uh, Opera Mills. Same company, so they kind of I guess people once, once you've already done all the Escape games, they have to change up the rooms, which costs money. So it sounds like this is just kind of like a different kind of thing uh, to do a game show. I thought it was a really good idea. I, I looking at it, I was like, I could this could be bigger. You could do a bigger thing. Yeah. Because what, what's one thing that, like, as a kid, we always wanted to do? You always wanted to be on a game show. Oh, yeah. Like, Legends of, the, Legends of the Hidden Temple was my all-time. I wanted to be, you know, Obviously. the Purple Parrots or whatever. And, <sighs> and run across the lily pads in the water and, then like, go through the, um, the you know, uh, temple thing at the end and try to find the gold monkey have the statue. Head, have the head talk to me. Right. Yeah, exactly. That. <laughs> Like so, how cool would it be to like to do some stuff like a big time kind of things like that, that would be and cool. you pay to go and do that? So this was a good little concept where it was just like one room, two podiums, and you know your buzzers, and it was it was a very simple setup. At forty bucks a pop per person, damn, it's pretty good. I That's mean, pretty good. You're killing it, pretty good. Yeah, because your overhead can't cost that much. No, I wouldn't think it would. I don't guess not, but. Um, I thought it was really cool, and I feel like they could uh, make it a lot bigger. Are you turning my audio down? Is that cool? you? Yeah, that's me. Sorry, dude. I'm number two. My bad. I was switching these headphones around. I'm going oh, okay. to try these really nice ones since mine are not nice. Oh, yeah. Those are much better. Yeah. They're weird. They're so much clearer than my other ones, so yeah. they don't sound right. So oh, yeah. So these my other ones that <laughs> sound like shit. <laughs> well, uh, those are the ones that I got that if we liked, I was going to get a full set. Yeah, I know. I need to. We need. I need to. Anyway, it goes without saying. Yeah, I haven't done a Which game. Which gives a shit, like, while we're just audio only, what the headphones look like. But I kind of, once we get a video, kind of have like a... Oh, yeah. I like the little get lapel it. ones or whatever. The little Yeah. But either way. Yeah, no, I haven't done a game show. Um, you know, Garrett, his family went on Family Feud tryouts. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, so they had to actually go to a studio and, like, try out. And I think they were in the top four to get it. Like, you go and actually do, like, a mock yeah game and then you find out if you're actually going to go on but apparently there was some kind of scheduling conflict or something but yeah dude they were that'd be cool i'll be down they were pretty serious about it i told gary though i was like just because you were in you know he was in drama for a while like you were and stuff but i was like you're kind of a shy guy i don't know if i could picture you on national tv yeah that's true um but yeah they apparently kicked ass for several rounds through I've never See, I, I would like, even if I, I don't care to be televised necessarily, I just would like to do oh, it. Oh, yeah, they had fun. Yeah, he said it was cool. You know what I mean? I should have asked about that when he was on. I forgot to bring that up. I need to do that. Hell, yeah. What other game show would uh, did you watch? Would you want to be part of like, Oh, Legend of the Hidden Temple is is probably That's because it has the, the it has like the um, obstacle course type thing. I like the obstacle course type I'd stuff. like to do one of those shows like where you do the, not American Gladiator, but like one of the. Well, there was the Nickelodeon version that was uh, Guts. Remember that? I do remember Guts. And you had to climb uh, Mount Crag at the end. What was the one Crag where you had to do, well, there was a game show where you had to actually like fill in the blanks. There was another game show, that, yeah, there was another game show where hmm. I thought you got slimed at the end. Let me look it up. Is, I that, gotta, is that Guts? That might be Guts. Let me look it up. We're talking about like Nickelodeon game shows. Yeah, yeah, Nickelodeon Guts. Nickelodeon chic. <laughs> <laughs> Almost put Nickelodeon. Uh, you're gay, and I'm on the internet wearing a diaper. <laughs> that fucking movie is so good. I, the, the whole movie was this. Is the beginning of that movie. I don't even really like. I would st- after that reunion, I would stop watching because that that was just the best part. The whole thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Crank that back down. That yeah, that's bad my, boy. That's my bad. Um, no big deal, man. It was it '90s game shows? Yeah, yeah, here we go. Nickelodeon game shows. All right, here we go. Nickelodeon. Double Dare Guts. Yeah, that's it. Nickelodeon Arcade. Wild and Crazy Kids. That was a good one. That was like a field day type show. You yeah. remember that? Oh, yeah. Holy shit. They don't remember any of these. Wild and Crazy Kids. Here we go. Let's watch this real quick. It may not have had a long run, but it was visually engaging for many kids. Okay, that's some loser. That's some like, dude rewinding. talking about it. Who gives like a, a shit? 
like a promo for it, like a commercial for it. That guy sounded sad. I don't think he killed himself after that video. That was probably his. <laughs> that was probably his letter. Um. Ooh, I'm gonna get on here and judge women while I'm on the podcast. Do you got any good ones lately? Uh, All them crazy no. kids. I had a couple matches, but uh, they're uh, non-responsive, which most of them are. People are so rude. I know. Mm, intro, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I got it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, see, that's the game show I would probably want to do. Is she like fun kids having fun? Is that like wasn't that like uh, they were like on a campground or some shit? No. Oh, that? that was like not Outward Bound. What was that? That was that camp they went to. Yeah. There was Make the Grade, All Star Challenge, Scaredy Camp, Finders Keepers. What would you do? Get the picture, dude. Why we had so much better shows then? But Legends of the Hidden Temple is number one on here. I heard they're, oh, yeah, I heard they're redoing that. I don't uh, know how true that is. Did they? I, I heard they. No, I heard they were going to. Did they revamp it? Yes, I don't remember half of these things. I re- really just remember Legends of the Hidden Temple, Guts, Double Dare. I think that's. I think that's probably about it. The nineties were cool, man. Yeah, I know. I also had the best cartoons. Hey, do you do you ever watch that show that came on After Hours? It was not porn, but it was was it Brooke Burt used to have that show where she would like, Wait. you know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> what you said that was like, there was just a show called porn. Oh, no, it was not porn. <laughs> um, it was Brooke Burt, and she had like that party show where she would like go to different places. and like. Yeah, bro. Hold up. About? Hold up. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Right? I know what you're talking about. She was hot as she balls, and she just, she just basically was traveling around different places yeah. being hot. Being hot, yeah. Oh, Did what was the name it? of that Hold show? On. Pull it up. You got the internet, man. Oh. Yeah, Brooke, Brooke Burt. Brooke, Burt, Brooke Burt. Burr, Burr, Burr. <laughs> you remember, you remember Burke. her. You know her. Burt. Don't be a dick. Uh, I think her name was, uh, I think it was Adam. <laughs> let's see. What she, uh, let's go to her um, filmography here. Uh, what was it? It was on, was it on E? It came on around like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Because it was like after hours. Like they do like their whole... All right, Brooke Burke. Let's see if I can. I thought that was a D and D shirt you were wearing. It's not. Show. No, it's not. It looks like it though. It, it's not as cool. It was, a, it was a free shirt that I got. Thank God it was free. Yeah, I know. All right, let me just go to the IMDb here, and it, when I see it, I'll know. Fuck. Hold on. You can just look up Brooke Burke late night ninety show. I'm probably gonna- shut up. She was in a ton of shit, but I don't remember any of this stuff. Wild on, wild on. It was yeah, like wild I on. Found that Turks and Caicos. That fast. Wild on. You're like I Guam can't find or whatever. Yeah, the that's fuck. her. Yep, with Brooke Burke being all hot. Yeah, so like that ran from '97 to 2009. She's still good looking. I quit watching it after a certain point because I missed out when I discovered porn. <laughs> Right, the hub was discovered between I don't know two thousand six, two thousand seven. Right, that's when I quit. <laughs> like uh, ninety seven, yeah, yeah. like wow, this is great. Yeah. Uh, wow. No, do you, remember, do you remember? Oh that? It was like this. Shit. Did you find a video? No, I'm just no. saying. Like, oh, I had terrible ratings. <laughs> I had a four on here. What'd you? I don't. IMDb. What'd you get? Like three seven. <laughs> six out of ten. <laughs> that's not bad. That's failing. <laughs> wild um, on is that what's called. Yep. Wild on. Yeah. Here we go. Look, that's what it was, dude. The internet is right for you. Go, go. Yeah, Sablanca. Yeah, dude, we used to watch this show because she'd wear like a swimsuit. So we thought we were like... We yeah, watched like this a, goofy shit? I don't know, dude. We were so, so desperate. <laughs> this was like... I mean, the internet was around, but it wasn't like it, it was, is now. Uh-uh. So like... You know, that and we you were just we used to get desperate tr- for any kind that, of hint of a titty. Yeah, that and then come on, titty. Come, come on, on, titty. titty. <laughs> well, that and whenever you get like the girls going wild it's commercials, college girls are crazier oh, than yeah. ever. Oh, yeah. And, like, the, <laughs> and they'd show them, like, guess what? They even shower together when they're dirty and they're like got the big black censored bar on them. Oh, yeah. For only $19.99. With, like yeah, four easy payments. She with the thumb, she's like, Wee! Yeah, it's like Heather's going nuts, and then exactly. like, she's like in the back of a van. <laughs> so, so cheesy. 
Those guys made a shit they ton of money. They made a load of money. And I think they ended up going like bankrupt or like file for uh, bankruptcy or something. Yep. I don't know why I just those, said that twice. Those uh, girls gone wild girls, they, they walked so the OnlyFan models could run. Oh, they did they run set the too. stage. They really right? did. They laid the groundwork. Dude, I remember. They're pioneers that's in like, their field. That commercial, come on, they'd be like that one girl with a tongue ring. You're like, oh, dude, she's got a tongue ring. Did you see that? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I remember yeah, the first yeah. time I saw a tongue ring. It was at a car wash. Right. Of course, I was. Uh, it was like for nine ninety five, you can get two yeah. discs or you know, it was like two tapes. It was like VHS, yeah. two VHS tapes. And it was like if you stay on for a, an extra ten minutes, you'll get this bonus tape. <laughs> right. And it was like I don't know, some girl blowing a dude on the plane or something. <laughs> so that was it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, I always I was too chicken shit to try to buy one of those. Well, there was just an Instagram video I saw it on a reel. It was. Too like a, they were in like a hoarder's house, or whatever. And they're like, "Wonder what's in this VHS tape?" And they pushed it. It was like one of the TV combos with a little VCR on the bottom. They pushed it, and it was a girls going wild day. Yeah. They was like, "Turn that off! Turn that off!" <laughs> uh, <laughs> those things have to be like collectors' items now. If you Dude, find it like an old girls gone wild VHS tape, and I never, I'd like finger on the nose. We never, I've never seen one of those tapes. No, none of my older friends ever bought them. Like I didn't know a single person who ever bought them. Hell, I think it's been like, ten years since the last time I saw like, like a Playboy. We had oh I, dude, I don't think I saw one. They yeah, used, they used to be in gas probably, stations all the time. I was probably fifteen, sixteen before I saw one. Maybe yeah, but none of my like nobody like you see the movies where they're like under the bed. Like I've got twenty of them. I stole yeah, yeah. them. None of my friends ever had. I had some. <laughs> Did you have some? Oh yeah. We weren't friends then. I ended up I ended up uh, acquiring a uh, a treasure trove of them. Okay. Uh, when I was young, I was a teenager. End up going to a an auction. Yeah, and you can kind of like look through the boxes. They, they had they had it wasn't just single items like boxes of shit. It's a filthy auction, right? So you could kind of like peruse through it a little bit to see yeah. kind of like, but they wouldn't let you like like dig through it. It was just like these crates, and you had to bid on the entire crate, and whatever was in it is what you got. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, and, Did you go like uh, this, like that? So, guy does? but they let you kind of like walk through it and kind of like peek and kind of you know you couldn't really rummage around in those crates. So I happened to look over to one, and I just saw, like... I saw a titty. It, you know, through the junk, I saw, like... Yeah, like, it the was, yarn like... yarn and old batteries. Right. It was, like, a titty. It was like a like an elbow on a shoulder of a woman. I was like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> it's actually a, a good, house, mag. good housekeeping. <laughs> right. Was that an auction you went to? Yeah, yeah. It'd be funny if they... Did you do, like, that guy does in that TLC show? He's like, yep. Yeah. So I was I was I with, I was with uh, my cousin who was older than, older than me. I actually couldn't. I was too young. I couldn't. Bid. I'll do the hot bid or whatever. But I was like, hey, man, get that crate. And so he ended up getting out of I was like some stereo equipment or some He's shit. He's gold fucking bars, in. and you're like, this what, is yeah, what, <laughs> Right, whatever's in it. And I took the nudie mags, and it was awesome. Good for you. Yeah. No, I've never owned one. Yep. Uh, they were they were, uh, they were were actually like, not not like, play, they weren't Playboys. They were... Um, Hustler? They were Penthouse and Shaved. Hustler. Okay. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot. They show a lot. The first one I ever saw one, it was... Almost overwhelming. Like you see angles and things you didn't see at the time. You're just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. That was like on that. I hadn't heard a lot of those things. I've heard of like hustlers and all that stuff, but that was like on American Pie when his dad buys all those nudie mags to show him all the parts of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shaved is not one I'm familiar with. <laughs> he said, if you turn to the page like 62, <laughs> he opens it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's something about having one, and you know, you turn the page, and you you know, it's you don't know what's you gonna no happen. Idea. You don't yeah, know yeah. what the next page is, is yeah. in store for you. So it's just something that's also it's tactile. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now it's just like the speed of the internet. It's just constantly you're being bombarded it's with live. tits and ass. I'm like, I don't. It's just it's not the same anymore. You just go for the articles. You know what I mean? There was an, there was an artisticness to it. <laughs> well, you remember on Billy Madison, <laughs> Nudie Magazine Day. So, it's like old yeah. grannies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. like, "Oh God!" <laughs> he opens it up, <laughs> rides out of his mailbox in that golf cart. Yeah, it's uh, nudie, nudie, nudie magazine. The dude said, "He said, what's today? October." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just thinking, like, uh, for episode sixty-two, we should we should we should have an Adam Sandler like we can do it talk, uh, day. We maybe we can rank our best the best Adam Sandler movies <sighs> or whatever. Yes, something like that. And if, for the reference is uh, sixty two. For those that don't know, it's whenever in Waterboy, he's like lining up uh, on the football field. I think it's against the like the first team that they play or whatever. Yeah, it's his first or second yeah. game. And uh, you know he's Bobby Boucher and he's kind of slow or whatever, and he's super nice. 
And so he says to the the opposing, uh, I think it was a uh, who was it? Was a lineman? Pitch. I think so. Yeah. No, because he played because he played defense, so it had to have been like a tight end or something. And uh, and he was like, "Good luck on the next play." And he's like, "I'll be playing with your mama tonight." And he just stares him down. Sixty two. <laughs> and then the play begins. And he ends up getting the ball. <laughs> he throws, it to, he throws it to the guy. Right, and he ends up uh, he thinks, and he starts running off, and then he the opposing team scores the touchdown, but he doesn't care. He just runs right into the end zone, drop kick, drills that motherfucker. But that's what that's from. Sixty sixty two. Adam Sandler's a, a little national treasure. Oh, yeah. I do like him a lot. Talk shit about him all you want. I like him. It's awesome. And he, so he, what I like about him is he made his mark. SNL. Early ninety, you know, nineties movies, stand dance. up, the whole thing. Like he made his mark, which transitioned to SNL, then into movies, mm-hmm. was successful at that, and then he even, you know, kind of hit. He kind of hit a, a run of his comedy movies where they were kind of like, not good, like they were going down, right? And mm-hmm. then he switched over into some dramatic roles, and he was really fucking good in those. Yep, like Uncut Gems is one of them, right? And even before that, Punch Drunk Punch. Drunk Love was actually really good. I never at saw acting. Uncut Jim. Uh, dude, he's a he plays. I've heard it was almost the perf- like, He plays. I heard it was almost Oscar worthy. This like, ain't super anxious like, uh, degenerate gambler super well. I've heard it. It was Oscar worthy. Almost. Yeah, it, it was very really, very really good. good. Um, it, it's it's really okay. fucked up movie kind of movie, but okay. um. <clears throat> Uh, and that girl that he's like with in that movie is—he always casts she, really bro, beautiful women. Good. For, that's again. That, so and his he, wife, he his did wife right. is really attractive. She's very attractive, and he. So he 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 knew how to do it right. He had Selma he Hayek. Not, Selma he, Selma Hayek. He made his mark. Movies. Right. He made his mark. He goes into feature films, and he casts the hottest actresses on the planet to play opposite him, where he yes. gets to make out with him at the end of the movie. Yeah. And it's amazing. I'm like, like good for you, Jennifer and Anderson. He casts me. all his buddies. Oh yeah, in all the movies, he's kept. That's what apparently um, Rob Schneider did a stand up recently, and somebody said it's Adam's birthday. He's like, "What?" And he called him and sang to him on his birthday. Pulled his phone out because he's like, "I got." He's like, "He keeps me employed." Yeah, God, right. Oh, you're right. <laughs> he just accepted a big lifetime award, and all his friends got there, and like it was pretty genuine. It was cool. Like, yeah, they call him. Um, they call him uh, Sandmas Claus. Like he he does. I mean, he, why why would you not want? I was just telling uh, Aaron, my neighbor, this. I was like, dude, I said, I think another perk of being that extremely wealthy would be able to do incredible things like generosity towards your best friends. Like yeah. close friends that were your friends. I'm not talking about after you get money. I'm talking about the ones where you were poor shit. Like, you know, if you saw your buddy, they're like, you know, be cool. We could do this with the family. You're like, you know what? I'll make that happen. Or if they were like, man, my truck's having problems, whatever. You just shut up with a new vehicle. Like just doing really cool shit like that. So yep. that would be contagious. Yep. And not only does he cast the people, the movies that he's in, but he has his own production company yep. that he'll produce movies where he's not in them. And he sometimes he'll do like a cameo role, but he produces movies for his friends. You know what I mean? Yep. Which is awesome. He's, I think his movies all together have made, isn't he in the billion dollar club? Something like that. I think so. It's, it's pretty awesome. Hats off to the guy. Yep. I like him. I love the same man. I do like him a lot. I've always been a big fan. Even, yeah, video, when, even when the movies didn't land just right, I've always been a fan. See that video where he talks about like why he wears like baggy clothes? Mm-hmm. It's because he, when he was younger, he actually always wore baggy clothes because he like he's was actually apparently super ripped when he was young, and so he liked the idea of of wearing baggy clothes. And then he takes his like goes to the beach or the pool, or whatever, takes his shirt off, and people are like, "Oh fuck, it looks like a bum." <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a bum. Like then he that. takes his shirt off and is like, oh, shit, Sandler's ripped. I don't think it's like that now. This not, no, he, he said that, too. He says, now I, I do it because nobody wants to see that. <laughs> He'll like, you'll catch him where he lives or whatever. You'll see him like playing basketball with just strangers. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's a cool dude. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of celebrity like you want to be. You don't want to be that fucking stuck-up kind of. Do you see where I am um, post-season two of Reacher coming out? Yeah. And Jacob was like, who the fuck is that dude? And I said, that's the guy I tried to get on the pod. And he was like, you know, then I realized like. Then he reached out to his wife and then his wife's friend. He hasn't <laughs> been busy. He was on a writer's strike. He's been a home lifting weights. I know. He could have been Dickhead. on the show. I messaged him three times. He never would respond. I know. We're not part of SAG at whatever. So we can. Or was it FAG? FAG. Film, film actors. actors. <laughs> film actors. <laughs> that was from South Park, wasn't it? FAG? No, that was. What was Same that? creators of South yeah, Park. Yeah. That was a Team America. To, yeah, that's right. <laughs> FAG. <laughs> film actors guild. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, I'm not a part of that organization. That, 
I did. I did tell my dad today. I was like, I said, I'm. I said, my. It's coming. Like, I'm. Well, my opportunity is is on its way. We're going. It's going to be. We're going to get somebody big. Like I can oh, feel yeah. it. It's um. It's coming. You think so? My. I think my humble. We have hum- to redeem yourself after you shit the bed with Nate Bergasi. I do. I just. I'm not. I don't. I'm not that. I think I, what it is, and I'm not trying to like. I'm trying to like also back myself up for not talking to him, but I don't think I'm that big of a fan. Because I didn't get no, I mean, I didn't get nervous or starstruck. I was just like, I've seen clips of stuff, but I've never seen. I was just kind of like me. It wasn't enough for me to be like. It wasn't like seeing Alan Richardson or like Chris Pratt. I'm like, hey man, hey man. It was just kind of like, I don't know. It just wasn't there for me. That's why I didn't like. I'm not knocking his successfulness right now because he's everywhere. I mean, he's everywhere right now. Good for you. It's awesome. He's from Tennessee, but it's just not. You know, it's not like watching Kevin Hart on the treadmill. I'm like, I got to talk to Kevin Hart. But it, so, if, say if you actually like had a run in with a celebrity where you had a chance to like chat with him, like, what the fuck would you say? Like, well, I, like, like if it was some like, I was just thinking this, like if I ran to like Dave Chappelle, like I'm gonna, I know my brain's gonna be like, oh, you're like my favorite comedian, like I love everything, like he's heard that a bajillion times. Yeah. So I'm glad you asked this. I've thought about this a lot. Um I would probably, obviously, introduce myself, but I would try to keep it. I would try. I would try not to say the same shit they've heard a million times. Are you talking about like if I had an opportunity to meet them, or an opportunity to like sit down with them for forty five minutes? Interact for like five minutes, like you're like you're standing in line at the airport or something. I would probably shoot my shot. I'd probably you know make a joke because usually I lead into something funny. I'll try to notice something and, and make a comment. And then I'd probably like obviously pitch my pot a little bit towards the end, but I'd probably be just like I just wanted to just to meet you, like period. That's I just wanted to shake your hand, hey, you know, whatever. Big fan, how are you? Like whatever. But I wouldn't be like, oh my god, I, you know. I try to keep it cool, as cool as I could. Yeah, I mean, I was in it because it's just a. Dude, I would, I would try day, to go for maybe a, maybe a picture at some point, and maybe at the end. Yeah, but I know they they they're used to doing that. But some of them like it. I, I mean, don't care about autographs. Never cared about autographs. No, because I never have. I won't have anything for them to sign. Like I'm like, no. I'm gonna like have a poster of them in my pocket. Right, sign this fucking packet of gum. Now, like in my pocket. If I saw like, like the only thing I've never ran into is like if it was a like I have like man crushes for actors, but like if it was like a female actress that I was like that you know like too attractive in person, I wouldn't be able to talk to her. I wouldn't be able to talk. It would it would <laughs> mess just me have up. To I would probably awkwardly say like you're you're so you're too attractive. You're, right, right, you're glowing right now. I'm right. really sorry about this. <laughs> I got to try to like play on the awkward card. Like if I saw like Amelia Clark or someone like that, that big, I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. And it, especially if <laughs> and I, had, I, I had a little bit of this when I went, if to, you saw when I went to Dragon Con. You saw Dua Lipa? Bro. Yeah. <laughs> right. I like the closer I got to her, it'd be like, it'd be like it was getting too hot and I needed to like shun away. You know what I mean? Is there such thing of, like, too attractive? My face a little bit. You think there's such thing as too attractive? Yeah. Is that her? You, I remember you called me that night, and you're like, because I asked you who you saw, and you were like, yeah, she's, it's unbelievable how attractive these people are, like in person. Yeah. So like, when I went to Dragon Con, it was That's like that. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We um, met Candace, the girl from Flash. Yeah. And it's, you know, you see them on screen, and you're like, oh, there's a reason why they're in front of the camera is because they're attractive. Like, obviously, yeah. they're attractive, right? Of course. But then you see them in person, and it's something about <laughs> there's something about seeing them in the wild next to like normal people, to where you, you kind of you see the comparison. You're just, even like normal people that are also attractive, they're just on a different level, and it's just like I don't know. It's like it's like watching uh, you're like at the zoo almost, where yeah, you're just like majestic, and animal. you see like a, a silverback come out of the back, and you're just like, <laughs> whoa! It's like that wild. Look at that song. fucking thing! Well, it's it's thing. like that. <laughs> right get away from it <laughs> right. it's like that yeah dude i've never seen i have never seen a um movies tv show celebrity i've, I've never seen one in person that's a lie i just i take that seen lie several back. now we saw we went to that con for game of thrones in nashville we saw the guy who plays uh ramsey and the little girl with the dragon scale on her face remember that the shitty con you and I went to in Opera Mills years ago. Oh yeah, we saw they were signing autographs, but you and I walked around. Oh, and that's right. See them. Yeah, I don't know we kind of saw him from a distance. Yeah, yeah. he was the asshole on Game of Thrones. Everybody yeah. hated. Yeah, yeah. So that was that's the, and that was like from forty yards out, fifty yards out. So that's the closest I've gotten. Yeah. I yeah. Met Jackson Dean. 
country music singer. I met him when we went to Vegas that year. But other than yeah, that, I've never, I've never met any big time celebrities. As far as I want to one day, I want to go. We need to go. To, I want to go to Dragon Con with you. I've never been. That's supposed to be a good one. We should plan to do that. Depending on the guest list, like, yeah, I don't want to go if it's. I mean, nobody. Honestly, even if I'd say, I, you know what I say, I, even if the guest list is not that great, I say go anyway because it's a cool thing to go that's to. True. And then if have you ever been to Atlanta? Oh yeah, multiple times. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that way, if, if it's if it blows, we can just like go to Atlanta. You know, do oh, shit in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't. I take that. Back. I don't think it would be horrible, but it'd be neat to see like a big deal. I think it's just kind of cool. Like, I actually, you know, seeing the celebrities is one thing. That's fine. It, you, you know, you can like pay twenty bucks, to, like meet them and get an autograph. Hug you me. have to stand in line and right. Well, Go ahead. Yeah, what were you gonna say? She could hug me. She can, <laughs> right. Well, you had I could do the I could do the side hover hand thing. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't do that shit. I fucking say get in here. Girl. She's like for forty. You can yeah. Put your hand on my titty. Right. That's cool. Um, yeah, she uh, <laughs> must not had any uh, new roles lined up. Uh, she was hurting for cash. Um, but I, what I liked the most was like all the people dressed up in different cosplay stuff. Like it was just fascinating. Good ones, good like good yeah. ones. And you see it, and you're just like, "This is the coolest shit." Well, I like it because now some of them are a little obvious, like the furry thing. I can't get on. Board yeah, with. some of it was dumb, but weird. it's really the only. It's the time that like I get some of I, it. Some of it was I hot. Oh, I cannot. Yeah, I know. I get the excitement where it's you know, these people wait for like a year for this to come around, and like, and they've worked all year on this mm-hmm. costume and. You get to be with your peers that are in the same shit you are. So I get it. Like I used, to, I used to make fun of the idea of it, but now I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. So I, I would like to see. So like you said, some of the costumes of these people, like the Master Chiefs and the Stormtroop, the whole thing would be awesome. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Um, I mean, there was some that had like full like xenomorph gear set up. My favorite one, I think, was probably uh, Immortan Joe, and he had all his little wives. You talked to him. It was so cool. Yeah, and I was like, witness me. And he was like, I witness you. And he was like, gonna. he was legit about to pull out a, a can of like. I wish he would have. Of silver spray paint and spray paint my mouth. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. It's actually like, it's degree deodorant. <laughs> That's right. right. It's, it's, for it's probably like silly string. It's like Lysol. It's just going to get all over my face. Ow, ow. Allergic reaction. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I remember that video you sent me of them, those girls dressed like fairies out on the side and walking down the street with nothing on but like a shoestring. Yeah, they weren't glitter. even like a character. They just wanted to be Slutty hot. fairies. Yeah, slutty and But hot. they're hot, so we were accepted. Yeah, I was fine with it. Right. Yeah, and then you have cares. that. Yeah, so um, we should – I feel like I, – I, so I want to take you on and do that. Mm-hmm. Also, we talked about this uh, maybe last episode, a couple of episodes ago, but um, – Go to a Halloween party. You've never been to one. That was that was last episode. Yep. You need to go to a Halloween party. Yep. That's fun as shit. Um, especially when you're dressed up and like you got to. Especially, I always try to go to one that's fun up. that people like want to interact with. I haven't dressed up like for a Halloween theme and how am I now? Fuck, it's been over ten years. I it's beyond that, fifteen years or so. If not, I mean, it's been a long time. I <sighs> put on a costume. Lame. I know. <laughs> Well, I'm an adult, Zach. I don't trick or treat. So <laughs> I don't trick or treat either. Well, uh, I haven't. And I didn't do the whole. I don't do the whole. Call me a bad parent, or whatever. I don't really care what you think, but like, I don't dress up with my daughter to go trick or treating. That's fine. I'm not. Doing I wouldn't that. either. I just, you know, she loves it. And if she asked me, like, "Hey," I'd be like, "Okay," but like, she doesn't care as long as I'm there. She doesn't care what I'm wearing. Yeah, that's true. What are you supposed to be? I'm her dad. Yeah, teach her own. It's fine. Some parents get really involved in it. That's cool. I was supposed to dress up at uh, at work, and I, I forgot. And uh, kind of like kind of like we're in Vegas, and well, everybody's supposed to dress it, up, and they didn't. Well, it was cold that day, mm-hmm. uh, Friday or what day it was? Monday. I can't remember what day. Friday it was Friday, and um, it was super cold. No, so it was Thursday. It was like a third. Yeah, it wasn't. It was middle of the week because they were off. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we were supposed to dress up. And the theme was like alien or like outer space or something. Out of this so world. So like some people were dressed up like astronauts. And then um, my buddy, George, he was he was just, he had just alien hands and an alien head, but regular clothes. <laughs> and it was, re- it was really freaky. That's pretty cool. Because it looked like he was like an alien that got stranded here and he was trying to fit in. He had like a normal job. <laughs> I like that. So, um, but anyways, I forgot, but it was a little chilly that day. So I ended up wearing like a sleeveless, like, like Columbia vest. Right. And, 
just happened it was like a button down i was wearing like ball cap and like slacks and whatever you're somebody's and dad i know i straight up i look like george that's like what george wears all the time so when i walked in i was just like i'm george like i was dressed up as him <laughs> i'm a shorter person I'm a shorter george. george with hair <laughs> i like that do you have pictures of him with that outfit on yeah i bet you, I, I think he put it on his instagram it's really freaky with him and uh um and his family i'll show you real i didn't see it that's cool yeah, dude, it was awesome. We didn't do that at work. Well, you know, you're lame. So mm-hmm. It is what it is. So I think he, I'm pretty sure he, he posted he it on his own. Um, maybe not. It's just really disappointing he didn't. I'll have to say something to him. I have the picture somewhere. I just got to fucking find it. It's fine. Just forget it. Shut up. I'm now committed. I'm going to find this damn thing. Uh, it was awesome. He was kind of uh, freaking everybody out because it just looked almost. It looked a little too real. I don't know. Something about it was just uh, unsettling. It's probably in the text chat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and he does shit like this to where we ended up shooting like a like a um, some footage for like a commercial for one of yeah. our vendor partners. Yeah, or whatever. And so I had to like pretend that I was like doing something in the hub site. So I was like plugging and mm-hmm. unplugging the cable or whatever. And I was just like, it looked like I was doing a like live boomerang or whatever. It was really weird. But then he, uh, he ended up taking a picture of me. He does shit like this. Thick. <laughs> Draws a picture circle around my ass. It says thick. That's all I love. Hell yeah, dude. He loves doing that kind of crap. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And he, he edited this to, uh, with some thunder and lightning and shit. <laughs> what in the world? It looks awesome. It looks great. It's like an alien ram. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it looks really cool. He's it already looks, got the stature for it. So he yeah. looks like a, a formidable alien who's lost his way <laughs> right. in a Carhartt jacket. Yeah, because he's he's tall, so it kind of fits like a like the grays where they're like tall and skinny. Yeah. That's pretty um, good. He's gonna appreciate that I referred to him as skinny. Yeah, he'll really like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you noticed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> he did edit this uh, with me at the club. <laughs> <laughs> I do. There's my boss up on the stage. Uh, I really like that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, you were you were a, a whole mood in that outfit. Yeah, dude. Here's a little boomerang. This is me in the club. What's up? That's where you missed. That's where you had to go to bed early. That was me. I didn't have. I wanted to keep my job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm standing on top of that. Why have you not sent me that? I can use that for our podcast, and you did not send me that. That's oh, a that's great right. reel. Send me that. I will send that to you. Well, like you're right summoning now. college girls. <laughs> Save you witness. Know. Witness me. Yeah, I was like, look over here. Look over. Here. Look at me. I'm 36 and single. Woo! Who wants to sleep with me? <laughs> <laughs> I've got great, Nobody. I've got great health insurance. <laughs> Right, I'm going to four hundred one k. Woo, I'm so full, hot. I work full time. <laughs> yeah, nobody. We don't. They don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was uh, that's some good shit. That's a pretty good picture. I'll share this to you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Photos. I need to get back on the merch train. I need to get us some new stuff. Does it have audio? Hmm. I'll put audio with it. Don't worry. No. He has a little boomerang situation. Hey, speaking of cons and all the nerd stuff, I recently started an animated series. Okay, yeah. So you're, I, you're not you're not really big on anime. You've seen some. I've seen I've seen enough to be seasoned in it, but not like where I can like spit facts off like I can like Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or other avenues of sci fi fantasy. Sure. But I had a friend of mine suggest like, hey. Try these if you're if you're new to it or want some because I was like I've seen Castlevania which I love that show but they were like check out this one so I tried Castlevania is not like true anime well it's so more Netflix it's is doing this awesome. whole like Western slash anime it's thing awesome. but it's awesome so I tried I started Demon Slayer oh Demon Slayer is great so I finished the entire thing including the season two movie in five days wow yeah I well I mean there it. some of the seasons 20, are only like six episodes but yeah well the first one's twenty five yeah yeah but they're twenty minute episodes. Plus they're you got fantastic. your intro. There's some, it's not truly 25 minutes. But anyways, dude, I want to start carrying a katana as soon as I got done. Yeah, 100%. Like it is, 
if you don't even like anime, it's one of the coolest shows I've ever seen. Yeah. Because it, 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 it feels so, it's like the stakes feel real. Like they're about to ass. die every time. It's badass. And it's so colorful. That's what I like about Dude, it the most. Season three was in one fight scene. Yeah. The entire thing was a fight. Yeah. And it was one of the most epic. And then Act 4, 10 out of 10, my favorite one, Unreal. And I even, so there's not a season two. Was that the, the train? That's Act 2. Act 3 That's is right. the Entertainment District. The, yeah, the Entertainment four was, Entertainment District was, was good. crazy. Act 4, even way higher stakes. Oh, yeah. That was like um, Home of the Swordsmiths. More, anyways, I'm yeah. saying it wrong. But like, so then I found out there's no season 5 yet. No. So I've already now and that looked up. season four just came out. Yeah. So I've now looked up the book, the comics. I'm going to order them so I can, I'm, I don't want to wait. I want to yeah, know. They're amazing. There's about 4,100 pages. If you did the entire collection on Amazon it. So I think I'm going to go get them and start reading them. It's fan, It's fantastic. Oh yeah. That's right. The yeah, season four ended with, uh, yeah. With, um, his sister is like cured now. I guess she's okay. still a demon, but she maybe is. she's not. She's still, but a she demon. can stay, walk out in the daylight. That was Isica. the big, that was the big thing. So, let me go ahead and start by saying, if you've never watched anime, um, it's all made by men. Yeah. The reason I say it is because all the women are incredibly beautiful and proportioned out of this world. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so if you're watching, you're like, he has a little sister, right? And she's probably... and they're, It was the probably starts, some of it was made by women, too, because women also love women. That's true. So, you know, so he's, he's like 12, 13 years old in the beginning. Like, you know, and then his sister, it's his younger sister. Yeah. You know, so she has abilities as well. Like, well... I'm watching the show. I didn't know any of this. And like, she comes out of the box. Well, she can grow Bro, yeah. to fight. And so, well, I was just like, we went from 12 to 22. Yeah. And when and she goes 22 and feral. feral. And I'm like, she is smoke show hot. And I'm like, <laughs> she's not real. But I looked over at Colton and I'm like, dude, now I know why you nerds like this so much. He was like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, they're all beautiful. Every, everything about them is, yeah. So, that was great. The show is fantastic. It's yeah, it's really good, and the voice acting for the English dub is spot on. Like I'm, say, that Japan is an island of nothing but horned up men, and it pro- 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 proliferates through their media. It's nuts. It's like woven in there. And there 100%. I will say this: there's no fat chicks. <laughs> no, no. Every, everyone is extremely ripped and toned. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's crazy. I did love the show though, and I I'm definitely going to get the comics. It was this it's it's a, it's it's a good spot one. on, it's dude. One of, the, one of the higher quality ones, obviously for sure. Um, I know the final season, the final I think the final part of the final season of Attack on Titan is going on right now, and uh, I have yep, not. I need, ended. I need to start watching. It's it. It's ended. I um I, I've thought about starting it too. It's well, a little more story driven. I, I started with English dub, so I have to. If I start one with English. I have to finish it with English. I have to go. I can't. I can't go back and forth. So I have Crunchyroll. So I have access to. I've heard Jujutsu Kaiden is one to start as well. That's a good one. Um, so I may start it. Next. I like the ones that are really violent. It's that's what I do too. But I don't like. There's one I saw. It was a a real. Because you know, if you get it like on an anime, of course, the algorithm's going to catch you and feed you more stuff. But mm-hmm. I got on one. It was like Goblin Hunter or something. That one's not as good. And it's awkward. The that clip I saw was like some girls in a cave trying to fight their way, and all of a sudden they get like right. Oh, that was, oh yeah, that was. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Of course, they don't show. It's it. implied. It's implied, yeah. but I'm just like, I can't, I can't get on board with this. Yeah, this it was. Is, it, I I, I, I watched that whole one, and it's it's okay. I've heard it wasn't as good. It wasn't as good. No, it's not. It, I think it's in this. It feels like it's this almost the same kind of style as Demon Hunter, but and not feel, as good. but not as good. So, well, what about? Or uh, I've heard Seven Deadly Sins is good too. It's a little more comical. It's a little more comical. It's more traditional um, shonen anime. So shonen is like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it's, Jacob it's, knows a lot about It's this fighting, story. and where the character it gets more and more overpowered as the season goes. The seasons go along. It's okay. where they get to a point where the 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 the, the flaw in every single shonen anime where where it's like like Dragon Ball Z is you get to a point where you're so powerful there are no more stakes. Oh yeah, it's be like godlike beings. You're sliding. like godlike yeah. beings. Like you can't only go so high and then the show ends up petering out because this is it's like godlike power. Worth the mountain. Right. That you know, you have to it's, it's hard for show, shonen anime to like reinvent themselves and kind of like go back to kind of I don't know, 
to where you can kind of build back up again, it's hard. Yeah. But um, they usually don't. Um, they usually last for quite a while, but they end up petering off at some point. Um, that makes sense. But I mean, hell, the, I think Dragon Ball Z. You know, had the they had Dragon Ball Super came out after that. Mm-hmm. They did have Dragon Ball GT, which was a spinoff. It wasn't the same guy, original team that made Dragon Ball Z. So the direct sequel to Z is Super. Well, that ended, and they were like essentially gods at the end. And then um, now they're revamping it again, but it looks like they're basically doing what GT did, and they're making them all kids. Like one I'm of the. Not- and I'm not I don't into like it. it. It's like one of the dragons. They some made a wish to like turn all the Z fighters into kids, essentially. So it's not just young Goku, which start uh, started with Dragon Ball. It's like Vegeta and no, thank everybody. You. No thank and you. And so I'm like, eh, no, I'm not into it. I saw, I saw. I think your brother, maybe your brother, shared that clip. But I saw it, and I was just like, oh sweet, maybe they can like do something new and fresh with the Dragon Ball universe. And it was that, and I was just like, "That's when you run out. That's when you running out of ideas." Nah, yeah, you run out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're trying to like reset everything to where it goes back to where they're less powerful, so you can build back up again. And no, I'm just not into no it. No thanks. No, no thanks. But those are some good ones. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna venture into it. I'm, in, I'm enjoy. I mean, I look, we we talk a lot of sci-fi and stuff on here too, but I, I'm, I like, I like things that are cool. Like it's fun. It's cool. It's nerdy. I like yeah. it a lot. Um, What's things you can do in anime that you can't do in live action? That's correct. But if it's good anime. But like, if it's good. It has like to be Demon Slayer, good. Castlevania. They're entertaining. They're good. I haven't watched the prequel, anim- uh, Castlevania. Yep. I haven't watched that one yet. Uh, I will say avoid the live action movies of any anime I'm not on watch those. Netflix. They're campy. Or anywhere. They're, avoid them. Cheesy. The only one that is good. And it's good because of the, the anime they tried to, tried to adapt is so wacky. What, One Piece? One Piece. I heard it was actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. And it's because they they were not... They they took the source material seriously, but they actually followed the source material, and they realized like how crazy and wacky it is, but they just leaned into it. They didn't try to make sense of anything that no. happened in, in One You're Piece just, in live action, but like, well, instead of it, you know, him being all stretchy or whatever was the main guy, he like ate it. They would actually show like... We understand this is crazy. The dude ate a fruit, and now he's all stretchy. Oh, the pirate? Right. Yeah. So let's just do that. Like, yeah, let's well, not trying to just Take the source material. Right. Stop trying make to, like, it, make, make it, it look cool. real. You just... Make it cool. Just do it. Exactly. That's it's, easy. It's literally like the... I've watched uh, some of the source material, and it's... Uh, after I watched the live action, I've seen a few episodes of it, and then I watched the live action, and I was like, oh, okay. It's so one of the top. Back, and it has actually... Pretty close to the source material. It's one. That's the, the only way you can do an, a live action anime. It's one of the big three, One Piece. Yes, yeah. it's one of the big three. From what it's really I've been good, told. and it's still going on. It has a thousand episodes. Speaking of Japan, do you see where Japan just opened up with that Godzilla minus one? That's yeah. the biggest IMAX ever in Japan. Yeah, I saw that. Toho's bringing it back, man. So that looks. I'm guessing what they're doing is they're they're revamping the entire thing and bringing so, it back to square one. Yeah. So Toho is the original owner. I gotta of say. Godzilla. I gotta say, just real quick, you know, we've got um, Legacy of Monsters coming out, yeah. which I'm super excited about. I am too. And the three movies they did with Godzilla, King of Monsters, and Godzilla vs. Kong, right? Love those movies. And Godzilla has, when he, you know, screams, is, you know, yeah, atomic the breath, whole the whole thing is awesome. The Toho Godzilla scream in this new one is better. So much better. Yeah, they took, so they kept, they kept the model look of, 2014 Edward Garris Godzilla, yes. a little more bulkier, smaller head, but whatever. Toho, but style. made it a little crazy, and they took his traditional roar and infused <clears throat> it with the new one because yes. our version doesn't have the high pitched scream type yes. in the middle of the old school, and it's it's so they, actually terrifying. And it's awesome. So it's minus awesome. one is revamping their own storyline of Godzilla, like they're going to redo it, Godzilla, in their own style, and it's great because they do like this fusion of. No, I don't want to say campy CG, but it's you can notice that it's CG, but it's but it's done like crazy. It's just the way they do yeah. it is it's intense. And yeah, like there's that scene where he does his atomic breath and like his spikes in his back outgrow. Right. And then he like it's it's really well, cool. So if anybody doesn't know this, Josh is actually a big fan of Oh, I love Godzilla. Toho All of them. Godzilla yeah, back in the um, day. I had the See, toys. I think while while you were watching Toho Godzilla, I was my big thing that was like kind of campy not camp, kind of campy, but like of a different time, and they didn't have like high graphics and everything. It was was Planet of the Apes. I 
I had all those. I ate those fucking VHS. movies up. VHS, my all me five the movies. Whole set. I fucking killed those movies. I love those movies. I'm those... so excited about the new one coming out. It looks amazing. It does look good. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was going to be awesome. I actually forgot they were doing another one. Yeah, yeah. So when I growing up, I had all the Planet of the Apes movies. My grandmother bought them for okay. me. Um, on the they came in the the VHS set. I had yep. the three. Um, so that was my first time watching like getting into those, and they like even my friends weren't. Really into, it. of course, my parents had seen it. Like everybody had seen. Is it Charles Heston? Uh, yeah, Charlton Heston. Yeah. Um, I watched those and I was like, "Get your hands like, off me, you damn dirty, dirty apes. apes!" Like that was my first time experience, and I was like, "This is this is dope. This is something different. It's cool." And of course, it was an older movie, but mm. it was something about it. And then, of course, the Tim Burton was weird. I still watched yeah. it, and the new ones came out and really like, like yeah. this is you've really opened up for a new generation. Really it's got amazing. something here. But you can't touch the old ones. No, you can't touch. And there was one where it was like the atomic people or whatever. When oh yeah, one, they're yeah. all like skin was all fucked <laughs> up. Yeah, those are they were so worshiping much fun. the bomb. Those were so much fun. Yeah, uh, I did. Yeah, I've seen all those too. But I don't think I got into them as my mom was the one that bought me the Godzilla stuff. Like I watched the first one. The only one I didn't see till I was older was the original one. I think it was fifty three or fifty four. I didn't see that one till later. But like I saw all the, she had bought me one on VHS, um, and it was the one with I've seen with King Kong. I've seen uh, well, he fights Guy again. There's all I've seen all the, I had all those on VHS. The toys, yeah, all of them. I think probably the the end of the first Planet of the Apes movie is if it, there's there's a mo, there's the ending moment to where you talking about the first one, right? Yeah, the first one. Okay. He's riding along the beach with old little with a with hottie hot feral, yeah, feral hottie. Makes right? sense. She's been out in the wild for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, she, she went make feral and hot, talk. but she stayed hot. <laughs> she can't talk. Right. It's right. perfect. Perfect. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. But really. But really. Um, anyway, and then he, you know, right along the beach, and it's in his perspective, and then he gets off the horse, and then he walks up, and, you know, the camera's, like, close on him or whatever, and then he drops to his knees, you maniacs, you blow it up, damn you all to hell! And, and I look up, and, and then they pan out. out, and it's the Statue of Liberty. So they were on Earth the entire time. All, Earth, like that is one of the probably like top five biggest like reveal. Oh, yeah, you Ex- know, a twists. Where I, I guarantee, if you were watching that in the movie theater for the first time, and you saw that, you were just like, oh, "Holy shit!" Well, yeah, because that was my first time seeing something that played with time, like yeah. as far as. Yeah, because you had no idea. There was no indication at all. You just thought these old boys got lost, right? And Tim Burton's version, he went in a wormhole, so you didn't yes. see much of the space travel portion. Yeah, they land, crash, whatever, and then it's just like, but yeah, that they pan out, and I'm thinking like, okay, this guy's gonna go off and live with this that hot chick. They're gonna like whatever live out the rest of your remaining years, yeah, as a fugitive. And then they pan out, and you're like, holy shit. The entire time you think you're it's like lost, Earth and in you're the not. Far future, it's amazing. Way far, way far future. Um, yeah, that whole thing was that whole thing was really neat. Yeah, and so like chronologically, it's crazy because chronologically, it's it's the the last movie chronologically is number two when the they blow, the bomb blow goes off. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the end. That's the end chronologically. But then number three. Uh, two of the apes, um, Corn- Cornelius, Cornelius, and uh, his wife. Um, how was her name? Zayas. Yes. They no. You that sure? was the guy. No, Cornelius was Cornelius is Vera. What was her name? Let me look it up. Yeah, because old Charles and Heston had a little Cornelius? moment with her, and he was about to make. And actually, she did he you say kissed, he was about to mate with her? He kissed her at the end of the first one. Kissed the ape chick. He did, but it wasn't in a. It wasn't in that kind of way. No, it was like a. Thanks for believing me. <laughs> Zira. Zira. That's is the partner of... Zira and Cornelius. Uh, and Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas was the older guy. Okay, he was a different yeah. dude. Uh, anyway, those... They escaped through... from his, from They fixed his craft. The, the craft that they... That escaped from Planet of the Apes. Escaped from Planet of the Apes. Before the bomb, bomb blew off, went off. And they ended up going back in time to like the 60s or whatever. So and then, great time right, to land. And then they ended up having uh birthing because uh, zero is pregnant uh she ended up birthing caesar and so four was all about caesar you know gaining power and revolting you know he's like exactly. they were like slaves because they was actually smart i guess from i don't know i can't quite remember i guess they studied the the, the apes and somehow they were able to they were doing some experiments and they end up um 
uh, apes end up being like uh, smart enough to be servants, essentially, like butlers and drivers and shit. But um, yes. Caesar was they started the was was naturally that way because he was, but nobody knew it. That's right. I remember because at the end of three, Cornelius and Zero end up getting killed, and Caesar was only the only was was left alive as a baby, and he ended up getting kind of like snuck into the general population of the smart apes. And uh, and then he, you know, had the whole revolt, revolt and everything like that. And then Battle of the Planet of the Apes was the final one. And it was like, it was kind of like the last yeah. Planet of the Apes movies were like the last vestiges of humankind and apes were like fighting each other. But there's a kind of a different kind of twist because I guess something ha- happened with the timeline there that some of the apes and humans were working together. Yeah. So that plays in, in battle. So the way this new one's doing it is where... Caesar becomes starts the revolt, but does it does it peacefully, semi peacefully. Yeah. In this new plant based movie, we just saw a trailer for Cornelius is Caesar's son. Yes. So they did a little different, and then if you remember Tim Burton's version, Caesar was the one that started the revolt. Yes. And that's who they worship as the first ape, but he was the one who yep. started all the that problems. Whole thing. He was the one that went ape shit on the ship. Yeah. And killed everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So it, so those names they've kept the same names universally. So. Yeah, those are great. I need to go back and watch those. So those are great and movies. The the big the twist at the Tim Burton one, which I you know it, the t- I, I you know <gasps> yeah, I'm not a fan of Tim Burton. We had a Stella He's Warren. Okay, <laughs> right? Oh my god, she was so hot, bro. Those lips. I don't know she something about it. She didn't even she, talk. She said like two things, and she was but and she said absolutely so much. <laughs> stunning. She does have the perfect right. lips. She didn't speak, but she conveyed so much. Yeah, that whole dumb retarded look she had the whole movie where she looked slow and you're just like keep doing that <laughs> i'm into this now <laughs> i'm into this now. <laughs> keep, keep doing that and he tried uh, to talk to her like twice and she never would say anything uh, but yeah like, i know you're uh, not uh, I know, uh, yeah. uh, mctwist uh, yeah so i know i know you're uh it's like doing charades you're not to tim, jerk him off tim burton fan yeah, I'm not a Tim Burton fan, but the, the it was a fun movie. The twist at the end is where you know Mark Wahlberg gets back into his ship and he flies off. He goes back through the wormhole, and so he pops back out and he's back at his timeline on Earth. He lands in Lincoln Memorial. And he lands in Lincoln Memorial, whatever, and it's and the entire planet is apes. But it's like in the, the cops current are day, apes. cops, everybody's the reporters. apes. What the and that, right? He's like, what the shit, right? That so was I was like, one. I was kind of excited to see like where that was gonna go. Never did they left it. He never did anything else with it because I think it didn't do real well at the box office. I didn't. It wasn't my favorite, but no. to pull that out of your ass, like I thought it was cool. I thought it was neat. Kind of went off the rails of what he normally does, um, but I thought it was fun. I bought. I had it on DVD. Yep, because it had some really good casting, and the apes looked really cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that, that general ape was a nut job. He was cool. Oh yeah. Oh, I also remember the, where the 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 um, the two apes they were like about to get it on, and she like jumps up into the chandelier. Yeah, that was that's his wife, <laughs> right? Uh, and then the other guy was that bald dude who played yeah, Ryan Paul Giamatti, and he's like a orangutan. <laughs> he's, yeah. So I did like his makeup stuff design, but yeah, and he but Mark Wahlberg's character busts in or whatever, and she flies up into the fucking chandelier. That's right. Uh, oh, she got like a nighty on. That was that wasn't those characters I just described. That was another guy playing an orangutan. His wife was the cute chimp. Yeah, she was rubbing up under his chin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, then she went like this. And she, yeah, and she, she, she was like jumped in the seat. <laughs> doing like a little forgot. monkey dance. I forgot. About yeah, dude. <laughs> she has like she has like lace shit on. It's really weird, uh, dude. I wouldn't even be able to make that no, scene without absolutely laughing. There's not. no way. <laughs> like they're like, I'm gonna need you to act out a mating yeah, dance dude. of some kind. Uh, no way. It was awesome. <laughs> Gosh, dude. Yeah, they don't they don't make them like they used to, man. Sci sci fi here in the last couple of years has been <coughs> odd. But I think it's going there's, back. there's definitely it, some good ones. Like Dune is fantastic. That, yeah, del- like, I was so upset when it got delayed. I know. Rebel Moon is gonna be good. I are you on the fence? So here's here's how I think Rebel Moon could go. Rebel Moon could easily go like Jupiter Ascending. Yep. Where it's like, uh, what the fuck was this? Or it I don't could be get really that. cool. I don't get that sense right away because Jupiter right. Ascending looked awesome. Or you remember, remember whenever Cloud Atlas came out and you were like, had yeah. Hugo Weaving, had Tom Hanks, had like big stars and it was yeah, like this. Of, and it, then you, this crazy sci fi thing. And then you start watching and you're like, what the fuck is this? Like, I get what they were trying to do, but it was just 
I remember, weird. I remember when we went to the theaters and we saw Jupiter Ascending because we were like, this is going to be cool. And then you see Channing Tatum come in the room. With the fucking ears. And, and you're in the makeup. You're yeah. like, this is going to suck. He's got like, he's got like pointy ears and eye shadow. And, and you're then like, we, what the fuck? And then we, it's a smoky eye. Right. And then we saw. Because he's like half dog Space or something. George Washington. <laughs> yeah, right. Like. With the powdered wig. The powdered wig and shit. And he came in the room with Quaker. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. Like, and then that one guy had just come off. He'd just come off the theory of everything. Yeah, and then he played that brother. Yes, who was like a whiny, and yeah. he, you couldn't hear him. I want you to know. Yeah, he was the best. What he sounded like the entire I will time. Have this planet. I'm like, yeah, he sounded like he was struggling to breathe the entire. I think he movie. was constipated. Yeah, I think more than was, likely he was constipated. It was just weird that whole thing. But it had it, and it's Eddie Redmayne. He's actually a really good actor. He's an but amazing it's like, actor. What he was trying to do with that character, I it, it ruined it for me. And Mila Kunis was not. I'm sorry, she's not like a leading. No, I felt like she and I felt like actress. she accidentally showed up on set, but they they thought they got somebody else. Yeah, it was, and they're like, well, she shit, was you're not, already here. It was weird. It was not a, and she's not. She didn't fit the role. To the, me. Uh, the lore, I gotta say though, as far as just the, the backdrop, planets like harvesting stuff. planets because it, you harvest the people for the elixir for the, some sort of like life giving elixir, it. and you sell it like like that whole and there was totally like warring it. families. Uh, Trying to vibe, it's like, it was almost like Dune because you had the spice. This is essentially the same thing. Yeah, and it was um uh, just kind of revamped, and it was from the people that did the Matrix, the Wachowskis, because I think they're both trans now or whatever. The yeah, so they were the Wachowski uh, brothers. Now and they're, they're sisters. Now it's kind of like eh. now they're just you know the Wachowski blobs. I'm trying know. to get conjoined. Right, I think they're doing something new. <laughs> that's the next. That's, that's the, the next, next iteration of the Wachowskis. We want to be Siamese, right? Instead of the Wachowskis, we are we are uh, Wachowski. Wachowski. Yeah, <laughs> they're just they speak in unison. <laughs> yeah, that's their next. Step. They're going to be conjoined at the. Hey, if you guy. make it, if you make some, another set like the Matrix, I'm okay <laughs> yeah, with it. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I kind of want South Park to do that now, to where the Wachowskis just merge into one to being. One being. <laughs> Speaking of South Park, it was a clip for Black because Black Friday's coming up where they showed a clip where they did that episode and it was like nobody's gonna get in my fucking way of me trying to get gifts for my kids and it's like somebody in our let motorized cart and it's just showing the ridiculousness of all that. Gosh, man, they're uh... oh, and I watched something else too. Oh, do you you watch the season finale of Loki, right? Yeah, so. What First, a what a culmination! Great of one of the best characters that ever come yes. out of the MCU, and I was pleasantly surprised. I went into season. I knew season one was good. We've talked about it. Season two came in good too because I loved it because it was not. It's not what I thought it was going to be. It was even better because mm-hmm. it had. Yeah, it definitely. I was. felt like it had real stakes, real problems that need to be handled, and it affected the broader universe. Everyone. I mean, it was high. It, to me, that whole thing was scarier than Endgame. As far yeah. as consequences go, yeah, scale wise, it was it huge. was up there with like, especially how with how it ended, where Loki essentially becomes the Yggdrasil tree, yeah, and and he ends glorious is, is, purpose. He becomes like his glorious purpose. He finally realizes this one variant realizes that he is he ends up essentially becoming he who remains, yeah, and he is holding literally holding he the, is holding the, the timelines. timelines together. It was amazing. What a way to go. And I just watched his interview with Jimmy Fallon. He was like, it's a culmination of 14 years of my life playing that character. Yeah. And it was awesome. You couldn't have asked for a better ending. Somebody amazing. commented and said on Facebook that it was the best thing Marvel's done since Endgame. Yeah. And I would I would agree to that. I would agree. That it was that's, great. It's, that, that final scene where, you know, he, he, the co- they, they, he the solves tr- it. The costume when he's walking the bridge. Yes. Dude. And he's just like grabbing timeline after timeline. like strings, I really didn't know what was going to happen. Putting him on his back. I didn't know what was going to happen. And then when he sat down and then I, got it. I researched, you saw the tree. You and saw then, the tree. And then what I found out was at this point, spoiler alert, the TVA's job now was to is to hunt down variants of He Who Remains. Is to hunt the down. Hunt down yes. And whenever, he's, whenever she's, he says, hey, that variant you requested of 616 has been stopped. Which that is, was Kang from Ant-Man. Yes, that was Kang from Ant-Man. It's gone. In which he also established that, that the 616 is the, it, it was actually... Because he said something like six one six, and basically six one six was the sacred timeline. Yeah, uh, was the original sacred timeline. So I just read a thing though where after the events of what happened with Loki, see that's what I like about this show is that it actually had consequences that we're we're having a conversation talking about the broader universe. I yeah. What what the this show implicates for the rest of the for the movies. Yeah. And that's what the Disney Plus shows needed to do. 
they 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 got off on this fucking tangent with this goofy bullshit yeah. that nobody cared about. Yeah. That didn't have any effect like it you, like yeah, maybe you had some like these characters will show up in the, a movie or something like that or but they didn't have a real the show themselves did not have a real effect. Like Miss Marvel was a fucking dud. She Hulk, Hulk was an abomination. Yep. Right? Uh what else? Um uh, the um uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was meh. Oh, do you see they're reshooting? Hawkeye was all right. They're reshooting that new Captain America movie because poor screening. <laughs> Apparently, people hate oh, it. Oh yeah, I bet they're having to go back and redo yeah. a lot of work. I'm like, I can only imagine that yeah. shit stain. But what I was gonna say is that I read that um, that the TVA is going to be involved in Secret Wars. Yeah. To where the the rumor has it that TVA is going to be tasked with seeking out the prime uh, Avengers. Yes. Which are from all the different timelines. Yeah. They're trying to go get the, the best ones. Yeah, dude. I sent y'all that on our Instagram to, Yeah, that's group. it. To it's form so cool. like the ultimate Avengers <laughs> so cool. to fight Kang. And it's going to be awesome. Yeah, because there's such thing in the comics as prime Kang. Yes. And then uh, there was a rumor before this season two finale came out that they were going to introduce Doctor Doom was going to be taking over the Kang part. Because the whole Jonathan Majors thing has been really slippery, and they all thought about recasting him. But then they came back and said, "No, we're not." And they were like, "Well, we may go into because comic wise, Doctor Doctor Doom is the one of the baddest of all. He ends up becoming a god. He's the baddest. He ends up becoming of all. like one of the. T- he ends up com- becoming like on the level, just under uh, one above all. Yeah, uh, my friend um, at the tattoo shop is a massive like comic celestial nerd. level. And he said Doctor Doom's storyline is is his absolute favorite, and he's told yep. me quite a bit. But yeah, that was what I that was rumors. But I like the way they did this. It's a good way. It's a it's an amazing. I think they actually sent Loki off better than they did Captain America. Well, this so Loki Loki is setting the stage in the whole TVA thing, and this 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 comes from Endgame, and they fleshed it out in a in the worst way possible because it was all over the place. I mean. Doctor Strange was I like Doctor Strange as a character, I do too. and Multiverse of Madness was it, it definitely had a lot of a high points, but there was some weirdness to it too. Like I look at it as a popcorn flick of MCU for me. Sure, it, right, and so it, but I think it, going forward, he, what happened in that movie is going to have some consequences. But you can kind of see where they're going with it to where uh, you you can see where the, they have all these strands of these different timelines, and now Loki's keeping it all together. We kind of see how that's that's panning out. You see how Multiverse of Madness, where they were talking about how these you know universes, uh, what what was the word, converge and they destroy themselves. And the Spider-Man movie. It's, and, and of course, Spider-Man movies. You can see how this is like coming about to where you, now you're seeing how they're going to be able to fit in X Men and Fantastic Four and everybody else mm-hmm. because. I mean, Hugh Jackman is now in Deadpool 3 as Wolverine. Deadpool is now back in with Marvel and to where he's going to be crossing over with the broader MCU now and actually have consequences. I I just read today where he's what happens in Deadpool 3 is going to have lead right into Secret Wars. Yeah. And so it's with all these timelines, you can see where now you can pull literally pull like Hugh Jackman, Wolverine into the broader MCU and it makes sense because you're literally just pulling him as yeah, a variant so of another of another Wolverine. Deadpool three, I think, is gonna be it's the only Marvel movie scheduled for twenty four. Yep. I think it's gonna be the one that really busts the scene. I'm excited about that one. That thing has cameos out the ass yes. for characters. Like t- Deadpool two was was fun. I liked it. I liked it. It was fun, but it didn't have any there it, it's just fun. It, it's just what it, it is what it is, right? It was just fun. Um, this will be the first one. This one is where you, it's going to matter now. And the same thing is with um, uh, with Venom, too. You can see how Tom Hardy's Venom is going to get involved. Mm-hmm. I'm it's, so excited about this stuff. I hope it... I hope it... If you, I hope I hope Marvel looks at what they did with Loki and be like, carry that forward. Well, someone brought up a good point. You know, um, Jonathan Majors is having a whole problem. He plays Kang. He's having a, some, you know, legal issues and whatnot um, to where uh, they... They've talked about, you know, I think that's hurt the franchise or hurt his character. A little bit. A little bit. I, I like Jonathan Majors. I think he's a good actor. And uh, I like him as He Who Remains. I didn't like him as much as Kang the Conqueror in Ant-Man. No, uh, he was I, okay. I prefer him like you just said because you really got to see him shine. Yes. Especially that last episode. He plays a great 
kind of smart ass, kind of super smart, kind of knows. like high intellect, kind of like a um, Alex Luther type. I didn't but, like him as that variant. Right. But he here's the problem with Kang as he is as they as we've seen him so far is that he does not carry this gravitas like Thanos did. Thanos walked into a room and you could feel the weight of his presence. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you could feel the effect that he was having on the plot, on the everything. characters, on everything. From early on. Like he had this just imp- and in the, when he talked you just kind of like gravitated toward what he was saying because and some of the stuff he was he was saying uh, was almost kind of like logical and you're just like fuck he's like a true believer i can see where like yeah he's kang a not, committed does, person does not have that kang doesn't have we don't i don't really know what kang the conqueror's motivation really is besides the comic booky kind of shallow i just want to take over the universe like thanos his whole thing well, the reason why it felt real and powerful was that he was thought that he was he was going to destroy half the universe or destroy half the people to fix the to universe. in order to fix it. So he was like a which is all evil people when they are committing evil acts they think they're well intentioned. There's not a there's not an evil person that's ever lived that thought that they were evil. They thought they were doing the right thing. Yeah. They were thought they were doing the necessary thing. Right. Right. Nobody when they're committing it thinks that they're evil. Right, they right. think that they're doing justice. They're doing the right thing. It's for the good of humanity. It's for the greater good. Blah 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 blah. Right. So Thanos was that type of person. So that's the reason why it felt real and good. Yeah. But Kang was just this. You know, I just, I just want to take over. Like it was. Yeah, no, what was the motivation? Well, the one really? was the thing I, you get early on is like I want to get out. He was trapped. See, and that was fine. He he was exiled. Wanna he and wanted then, to get out. And then, but I just didn't. He didn't feel. Like even if he got out, they're worried about him going through that portal. I'm like, okay, so if he gets out, just shoot him. Yeah, he's just. A I dude. mean, he's just a dude. Like he's a super smart guy, but like he won't have anything. I mean, if it wasn't for that suit he was wearing, like, right? I don't know. I think you said it best. He's just not to me. He is not a real threat right now. Right. Now maybe his other variants we see in the the Council of Kangs. Maybe there is some in there that are real world problems. He, to me, did not feel, that variant did not feel like a real-world threat. So we'll see where it goes if they do keep him. I don't think he's bad. I just don't find him, he's not a thing. He's just not, not menacing he's like not, Thanos He's not was. scary. No. He's just not at all. I know. Then they had the Council of Kangs at the end where there was like all those variants. And so I, there was, I feel like, the, I don't know, I don't know really, There's there needs to be some, a variant of Kang that emerges that really is Thanos-like. To where you, really, I think, I think we will. Somebody had, and someone said, you know, with whole, all the problems with Jonathan Majors, is that someone had posited that the now is the opportunity if they wanted to, because they had shot him and stuff, it. to recast Kang the Conqueror, and so it's no longer Jonathan Majors, and it would make sense because you are have already seen all these variants. Like, I mean, look, Loki variant was a entirely different character. Yeah, Sylvie the, it was to, a woman, blonde it would chick. Be, it would be, and one of them was a fucking alligator. It would be a good opportunity. To Maybe. to recast it. If you don't, then we need to change the dialogue. We need to change moving forward the story. Actually, even if you do flashbacks, I need to see some terrifying shit. I need to see a real, like you know, he, the like you said, the scary thing about Thanos's character was the fact that he he made sense and he stuck with it. He didn't change his idea. Like, and then you watched him kill and destroy plants without even thinking about it. And then when he got done, he was like, I'm done. I'm going to go farm. Like yeah. he was terrifying, but that's also a 10 year buildup that we had this guy in the background. Yep. I don't know. It's we'll a- see. I haven't, I didn't, I've never seen Jonathan majors and other things at the time. I don't think he did a horrible job. I just did. I was leading up to finally seeing Kang as like this big, bad, like this is not good. Like even the way I don't know. I don't remember her name, but, um, the older lady in Ant Man, who's the original Ant Man's wife, she made it sound like if he gets out, he's the worst thing that could ever happen here. And I'm like, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't I mean, buy into it. Uh, yeah, it just wasn't. Uh, I guess maybe. I guess it is. It is true, but it, I just, they didn't. They didn't. It's one of those things that some movies have a problem of is they they forget to show because they're too busy telling. Right. Okay. That um, makes sense. So they're telling us how menacing and bad it would be if he got out, but they need to show it. 
Yeah. You know, and then that, that has more weight to, to an audience and to our eyeballs than, than telling us. Right. Um, when it comes to film, our eyes matter more than our ears. So, um, that, um, I think that's the problem with, with our, the first time that we see Kang, um, Kang the Conqueror. Now we saw he who remains, which is his variant at the end of season one of Loki, but we understood that that was a different character. Yeah. So Kang the Conqueror, who's supposed to be the big bad of, you know, the current phases of, of MCU, his first appearance was kind of, I don't let think, down. I don't, but if when they, Th- like when Thanos first shows up at the beginning of infinity war and he's fucking up all the Os- Asgardians and he beats the shit out of the Hulk, you're like, okay. Well, I think if, if from here, if they went into like, he's not the worst of the variants. That would be fine. I would buy into that. If okay, there's cool. if there's a even if there's a worse. Maybe one. they do like Prime King, like you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, I'd, I'd be okay with that because I'd be like, okay, that was just another version. This was just one that they, he they called him the Exile. He wasn't even called Kang the Conqueror. They just called him the Exile. You could send me that, and I'd be okay. I'd buy that. So maybe he wasn't really Kang the Conqueror. Maybe he was. Maybe he, that's who he was, was the exile. I mean, they treat the reason why they exiled him because he was like apparently the worst one, but I feel like they could easily pivot. Oh, and it's easily. Like, actually, we were wrong. I'd be okay with that. I could, I would be okay with this that. This is the worst one. Prime Kang is the worst one. Speaking of all the actors, so I guess that strike's over. I just saw, I guess it's yeah, all apparently over. They reached an agreement. So now um, everybody's posting about stuff. All the actors are, are posting I saw that shows. Like, on Jimmy Fallon's interviews, they're like, we can talk about it now. I was like, I've been talking about it. Yeah. But, but yeah, like they, I guess all that's stupid, but like I didn't realize how much they postponed. For one, I'm pissed off because Bridgerton got hosed down. Mm-hmm. So that was supposed to be November. I've been waiting long enough, mm-hmm. and I have to wait longer now. Uh, apparently, they said in three weeks, Stranger Things will start filming again. I was like, the kids are going to be forty. Like, this, yeah, I know. Let's get it going. Let's what? expedite this shit. They did all this striking for, you know, whatever they got. And I guess they got some concessions out of the studios. I guess, I don't know. I don't know if it was a win-win it's or annoying. whatever it was. Um, but here's my question. Um, is it, are, is your writing going to be good now? Yeah. Is it, are we going to get That's better all I, quality now? Are you going it, to, it's now, you, now that you're, you're satisfied, you've got your money or whatever you wanted from the studios, you got your concessions, mm-hmm. writers. So you're going to be good now? No. That is it. I doubtful. Same thing if you have a piece of shit employee and they're like, I just gave you $20 an hour now. Are you going to be yeah, a better employee? Doubtful. Because no. one of the things they were butthurt about was like AI. Oh, of course. Right. <laughs> was to, was like, you know, their studios were using AI to basically write most of it. And then a writer would come in, a select few writers would come in and kind of tweak it and make it better. But like all the groundwork was kind of done by AI. And that was one of the things they were worried about is like, I guess the studios they not. Jobs. They took their jobs. Yeah, that's exactly. Um, that's what they became. Um, but I've always contended is like, um, maybe there's too many of you guys. Maybe there's yeah. too many mediocre to subpar writers yeah, and you just need to that. fuck off. Uh, you don't deserve shit. Maybe, you know, maybe if, if AI is able to take your job, take your job, maybe you weren't that good in the first place. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of good writing, did you see a trailer for the new Ghostbusters movie? Yeah. I think it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be cool. Somebody was already bitching about it. Oh yeah. But I was like, I Paul Rudd. It's gonna make that. Yeah. Movie. It's just it's Paul Rudd. I'd watch anything he's, Paul Rudd's in. He's gonna. And then of course you got your original cast from Ghostbusters. But I'm pumped. That ending minus, clip. Minus Egon. R.I.P. R.I.P. That ending clip of him like, oh, like I'm like, I love Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah, I love. Paul I Rudd. love him. He is so cool. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That's gonna be so much fun. We. I mean, we all went and saw that in theaters. You, me, and Kylie all didn't. Even she was like, that was a really good movie. Yeah. Like it, I bought it. It was a good movie. Yeah, I, I'll I'll definitely be seeing that. We got some good stuff coming. Damsel, I'm on the fence about that. I think I'm Did you actually, watch the trailer? I saw that Ugh. with uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Millie Bobby and, Brown. She's uh, probably gonna have a titty scene. She can't right. wait. She can't wait to get naked. <laughs> she really can't. Sorry, it's a fact. <laughs> I don't care what he says. She cannot wait. <laughs> Why we keep saying she that? She may actually so be funny. like, what happens? She may be off script. Be like, finally, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I, she may not. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not saying she's a well, bad she guy. just was trying to like age. She's she was aging herself up for a so long quick. time. Yeah. I now she's know. getting married. Uh, you know, good for her. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it six months. You're hot. Um, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Um, I don't know. Damsel seems interesting. Well, I, I'm going to reserve judgment till I see it because just the name of the movie, Damsel, and 
the fact that it's all centered around Millie Bobby Brown's character. I didn't really see it. It, it could be really short good. Trailer. It could be good. It could be very good. Or, and that's just the way I feel like whenever you're watching certain trailers and, and concepts for movies in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that could be really good or it could be some woke bullshit. Well, that's there's kinda, no that's in between. That's kind of how we ride everything now, right? <laughs> and so I'm looking at damsel, and I'm seeing, yeah. it, and I'm like, oh, is this going to be like, you know, I'm no damsel in distress. I don't need a man to save me. Kind of like, is yeah. that the attitude throughout I, the whole fucking movie? Like, <laughs> I put, did I tell you I posted that? I think I shared it on the group today, where there was a legit dialogue from Mar- the Marvels, where yes, yes it was, it, it was the um, Monica Rambo's character. Uh, whatever. Um, that's not the actress. Monica Rambo, the character. She's the character's name. I know. Uh, she. Um, there was a line of dialogue where someone s- says to her, "says just why don't you just fly?" And she rep- responds, "I don't know how." And the person talking to her, I'm guessing, is probably I don't know Brie Larson's character. Maybe maybe it was. I don't think I don't she know. would have said that. Maybe yeah, somebody maybe one. says the younger. Just use bl- just use your black girl magic, and I'm like, oh my eye roll. Yeah, so I haven't even seen the movie. I haven't and seen just it like, either. That's the dialogue, but I've heard better things than I thought about it. Yeah, look, it's, I heard, it's Marvel. I, I'm gonna watch. Well, it. Well, I know that, but I heard that uh, I, Brie Larson was just on Jimmy. And if y'all don't know, it, I'm a Jimmy Fallon fan. But I was watching the show, and she was on there, and people were commenting because people are usually pretty ruthless in the comments. And they actually said that it was the first time. It was a, the best part was actually seeing her character in the Marvel or MCU actually arc and actually have a good moment. Like they mm. actually loved how it, how she did her thing. I heard it was basically, I guess that makes sense. it's like, it I really didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. That's what I've basically Oh, well heard. then that's okay. That's middle I'm, of the road. Right. I'll watch it because it's, well, apparently it's, about, it's bombing hard. Oh yeah. They said it bombed worse than flash. Yeah. They're supposed to projected. Like it's supposed to, Which, in, in order for them to like make money, they have to make, cause they spend so much money on like production and, and marketing and stuff that, uh, and, uh, that, it has to make like eight hundred million dollars just to like break oh. even or some shit. Oh yeah, you're talking two or three hundred dollar movie. This is a crazy three. amount. It's only made. It's like just under a hundred hundred mil. It's like seventy five mil. Because weekend, somebody That's said a it, bad somebody weekend. Somebody said it too. Like you're almost turning too much out. It's too yeah. much too fast. If you're gonna do it, and we know what they're capable of, do yeah. it right. Well, and also it's it's. Two of the three characters, no one gives a flying fuck about. That's the thing that yeah. they they like they like made this the Marvels. Right, and it's all the entire trailer is is equally um, focused on three the all three characters, the Marvels, and I guarantee you, half of the Marvel faithful haven't even seen Miss Marvel or WandaVision. Right, you didn't even watch it. Didn't even know who Kamala Khan was and Monica Rambeau. People were like, "Who is she again?" The only one they recognize is Brie Larson's character. That's the only one they really recognize, and she was only on screen for a third of the time. They're just forgettable. They're just, it's a, they're two forgettable characters. Like no one gives it. Like they're, everyone's like, why am I watching this? I I, I just don't understand end. why Marvel Disney is is so fucking focused on cramming down our throats these C rated characters. I don't know. I do want to see the end credit scene. I did see it. Somebody posted on Instagram. I do want to see it because well, of yeah, that. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to see it. The end credit scene opens up. To what we were just talking about earlier, to a lot of, it it was big. It was really cool. Yeah. I, I could actually, I saw that clip and I was like, "I'm good. That's all I needed to see." Yeah, I'll watch it, but I'm well, not. Gonna, that, that doesn't speak good of your movie. That you, the most exciting part is the fucking end credits. <laughs> well, I never was a Captain Marvel <laughs> most fan, consequential any of part it, at all. Like I could care less if I just powers are cool, but if she doesn't speak, that's fine. But yeah, it's forgettable. But yeah, I, I saw that. I'm like, okay, I like the direction. We'll see. Two twenty uh, that Deadpool three movie will be the. The ticket, yeah. And the, you have to have you have to have Marvel. Um, Captain Marvel was uh, off to the bad start from the get go because of Brie Larson. It was t- terrible casting, in my opinion. She's not. She is not a likable actress. She's not that likable I on agree. screen in I, that particular type of role. And she's so nice. She seems so cool. In she interviews. seems fine, but well, she's. I don't know. There's. I've seen some interviews too of her to where she's very off putting, even to her fellow actors. So, but anyway. I digress. They should have sent. Some, they should have done somebody else because some people can just fucking carry a movie. Paul Rudd can carry Ant Man, even if it gets weird and crazy. Uh, Ryan Reynolds can ca- carries Deadpool big time because Deadpool is yeah. a little weird and out there. But he just 
is he is Deadpool. You know what I mean? Uh, Chris Pratt, actually, the entire ensemble of Guardians of the Galaxy carries Guardian. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. perfectly casted. Yeah. So it makes a big difference. And I just think Captain Marvel was off to a rough start because of Brie Larson from the beginning. Did you, um, since we're on the topic of our nerd fest here, did you watch the Goosebump show on Disney Plus? Mm-hmm. It's cool. I was I was a little hesitant because like we just talked about the whole woke and um I was a little sh- I was, there was a tad of it but it wasn't it was the normal teenage stuff like you had like your you know your signature gay dude and of course they had that but like there wasn't like what was that, me there was that's fucking normal these days if they come out saying, saying like, they're like pansexual yeah, and no, they have no genitals then it's but that was now it. it's like but that was it. Like whatever. I get it makes sense. It's fine. It it made sense to the story. It played out well. But dude, I was I really enjoyed the shit out of it. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Enough to pull nostalgic strings a little bit from the nineties of the show. The book I read all the books when I was a kid. But Justin Long was awesome. All the casting was cool. The story carried really well. There's two episodes left for the season. I watched eight. I think a new episode just came out. Definitely watch it. See what you think. I thought it was cool. See, I wasn't a big uh, reader of Goosebumps okay, so, back in the day. But you so watched the show, right? I'm not like, going to have the nostalgia. Did you watch the show at all? Some, yeah. It might not do the same for you. As far as just a... I saw if you the, never, like, the little... Then, you know, I just remember the uh, opening credits with the dog's eyes turn green. Or yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Um, even if you... Probably if you've never even read the books, it is... It's a cool, scary, supernatural... It's just done well. I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. I wasn't going to watch it. And I was like, you know, I'm going to check this out. And I finished Who's it. Who's in that one? Justin Long is the main. That's and it. And you got your the casting for the teenage kids. I don't know any of them, but they all did really well. Uh, there's dirt bikes in it, which was cool. Bikes sounded stupid. but And then uh, you've got your parents that play that are all big names. Um, I can't tell you their names because I don't remember. Well, obviously, they're big. No, they are. I've seen them in tons of shows. The big names that I can't remember. Well, some TV, <laughs> some actor. I don't know. Do you know the ones you see that you click and then you know? Yeah. For, but these, like, oh yeah, I've that's, seen that's the, yeah, yeah. The guy I've, from the thing. I've seen all of them. Like Justin Long, I knew right away. I like him. Yeah, yeah. And then there was some of the other parents we've seen in like other sitcoms and such. I've seen all of them. So it, it it's good. It definitely a must watch. I think. Okay. I'd give it a seven out of ten. Okay. Seven and a half. Might give it a try. I'll add it to my uh, my watch list. I, I've kind of I've been end up. As far as what I'm going to be getting into next, binging, I did finish Suits. Yeah, it's supposed All to be good. Fucking what was it, eight seasons. It's of one of the most shit. rewatched shows ever. Uh, the last season sucked ass. It ended Game of Thrones style. It ended really fast. Like the last episode, they just like wrapped up whatever they were happened to be doing in the past few episodes, and then it just ended. On a really weird note. I mean, it was a good note, but also like I was half expecting. There's there's a couple of characters that left the show. Yeah, I was kind of expecting them to show back up as a cameo mm-hmm. to wrap things up, and they didn't. So it was a little bit of a letdown. And I pretty much I've talked to uh, some other people that have started binging on Netflix as well and never seen it before, and they said it, season eight sucked ass. I think it was the last season. Is it kind of like eight. Fringe, where they started strong, but they should have ended it sooner? Should, well, you think? Maybe. If they would maybe. have ended a season sooner? The, probably. I think the, the season before this last one, um, it, when they got to the end of it, yeah, that actually probably should have been the last season. That's kind of what happens I've seen with shows is you get, you, you'll come on strong. They just did strong, one more and it was... Hmm. And you're like, okay, if you end it here, and then you see that final season, you're like, dude, y'all are just like... Holding on barely with that breeze, you just can't, and and you just throw out shit like I gotta close this, I can't find yep. it. Like, dude, just end it. It was like, um, if you ever seen the show Scrubs, I've seen a few things of Scrubs. I'm not a die. Love I, Scrubs I, back in the day. Well, there's things I've seen has been fun. Yeah, Love Scrubs. It was a great show. It got to the end of its if its run, and I guess the showrunners wanted to do like there's probably main cast. Uh, members that didn't want to do a next, another season. So they kind of got to the end and they were like, well, what are we going to do? And they ended up doing Scrubs Med School. And it was basically the Scrubs cast. They uh, went to a teaching hospital and were teaching the residents for the next generation. And so they had some new cast members come in and they were med school students. And they were, I guess, in their first years of residency or whatever. And by, or, 
I don't know how the medical school yeah, still works, earphone, but I mean, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were all in school, but then the, the original, a couple of the original, wasn't all of them, were... Um, Instructors. Were, were like teachers, were teaching the next generation. And it was, it's the last season of Scrubs was like, or her Suits was like that. Okay. To where like some, some of the main ones went away. Well, it was in the, that some of the main ones went away, and so they just kind of like, well, let's just keep this gravy train going, but we've lost like half our cast so what are we going to do? So they was like, oh, well, how about the next generation? So they brought in the last season. They kind of like brought in some new characters and then also kind of made some bit characters from past seasons that you kind of see pop up every once in a while. They made them like main characters and they tried to like, it was a whole, even the intro was different. Like they revamped the intro and it was just yeah. like, eh, just was weird. I just wish shows was not do that and stop trying to like milk the last little bit. Yeah, of your you know your fledgling cast like people yeah. if people are like leaving the show and not re upping and going back to make another season like just fucking find a way to end it yeah you know what I mean so it was like that uh, but so I don't know what I'm actually really gonna jump into next since I finished up suits I've got a bunch of stuff that I could could now that Loki's done um I don't really there's not really anything that I have to watch yeah. I've been watching. Um, actually, I know. I actually I know which one I'm going to watch next. Um, Gen V. Yep, supposed to be good. It's supposed to be really good. It's supposed yeah, to be I almost mean, as good as the boys. I need to watch it. It uh, ties in right. And it ties three in of boys will it, start. It rolls right into the next season of boys, and apparently, the end of of the next season of boys will roll back into Gen V. So I'm Those like, I'm shows. about that. Okay. So I, I haven't think, watched it either. I'll do I'm that. I'm definitely going to be watching that one next. Um, I've also it's it's coming out, um, you know, one episode a week. But I've been watching Invincible. That's the cartoon. So yeah, I've watched it. I've seen season one. Out. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Rough. It's rough. It's super. Violent. I haven't seen season two. Season two is only two episodes so far. It's oh, okay. good. Um, so I've been watching that. Okay. Uh, another one of those like uh, Amazon's, you know. Netflix, it seems to be having this whole anime thing yeah. to where they're like adapting element animes into kind of a little bit more Western audience. Yeah. And then, uh, but Amazon's full on doing like old school Western car, uh, animation, uh, of a kind of adult, you know, themed shows like Invincible is definitely adult. It's, oh yeah. 100%. And, um, Vox Machina is also really good. It's it's from D. It's from the Critical to, Role. I need to start. It's that. fantastic. I haven't watched that yet. I need. It's to do really that. good. Okay. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. It's got two seasons so far. Then I'll start that. You definitely should Probably watch tomorrow. that one. It's it's <laughs> like it's it's got some comedy. It's it's kind of it's it is it's Critical Role. It's group. Critical Role. It's the I've same as like the stuff. Dungeons and Dragons that movie. It's that it's their it characters. is that kind of exactly. It is Vox Machina is just like that movie. Fun and ridiculous, ridiculous and but. Got some really good action, and he gets really into the lore, and it's just it's good. I'll watch it. I'll start it tomorrow. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I think Gen V is probably going to be watching. Uh, okay, watching next. Well, uh, I guess we've been nerding out for almost. Yeah, two this is a little different. From, it plays a little more of our heritage of podcasting a little bit. So well, I'm sure yeah. people are going to be like, "This is these lame. fucking dorks." <laughs> yeah. Whatever. That's okay. There's people watch those shows that oh, are yeah. our listeners, so. <clears throat> oh yeah um so yeah like follow share um also thanks to everybody who's been uh especially uh the ferals and their podcast shouted us a video this week that was really thoughtful i thought that was cool we're trying to plan i've been we're trying to plan to do a um collab with them i might try to work that out for this following week yep if i can get them together and they'll actually it's a husband and wife duo so they'll come on and, and do a set with us i think that'd be a lot of fun we might have a guest next week. I was going to tell you about this. Might be able to get the elusive number four from the core four. You talking might, Big D? Might be able to get him in here, doo doo. Okay. I might be able to get him in here. Uh, he hit me up. That'd today. be cool. So um, I've never, I haven't met, I haven't seen him in years. Yeah. So um, we're gonna, I think he uh, okay. might be able to get him in here next week. Uh, fingers crossed. And then um, somebody also, uh, I've, I've had a couple of times interested in some merch, but I, like not enough to where we need to like. We Don't, talked about this. I'll do it. But whoever, who's, if, if who somebody want? if somebody expresses that maybe they want something, if we've got some extra stuff, I might be willing to. Even if you, if I don't have it, I'll get it. Right. That's what and I'm then saying. I'll have. We'll work on some kind of price type thing. We'll work something out. Yeah. So, so if somebody's wanting something, like the hats we have, the stickers, 
uh, just, yeah, message me, pri- DM me privately, and I can work something out with you. Um, we're I'll going. Say it, well, I, I mean, you're probably going to say, if, like, if you subscribe, we'll give you something. Yeah, we'll fit, yeah we'll work some out, and then we'll be switching to a video platform. So that's gonna we'll be trying that. I've already I said that last episode, or Zach did one uh, about switching to a video. We have everything to do it. We have to do finish up some mocks and some tests. But that twenty twenty four twenty twenty four is we're gonna start. We'll be on a all video platform. Um, I think that's kind of the way to go. I think people. I think y'all are gonna really enjoy that. I'm excited about it. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in merch, message me. Um, I might try. I'm, yeah, I think another big thing for 24 coming as well is I'm going to try to have some small business owners and some local people coming in um, that I've spent time with, hang out with, or bought their products, and try to do some more one-on-one with that whole thing too. Um, Gage is going to come back on. I've got some tattoo artists I want to have come on. So there's, the brand groupie is giving the, back. I'm yeah, uh, yep. So I'll be <laughs> yeah. That's my plan is to have some of them actually scratch my back a bit. <laughs> So, yeah, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Peace.